Hello everyone! Welcome to the last day of the Paladin Summer Finals. Remember, you can watch all of this content on live.skillshot.com for polls, team info, rewards, and more. My name is Latigris, and I am joined here today to start things off with Gormizer. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm really excited for today because we are, like immediately get a great matchup, and then it follows up with another fantastic matchup. Like there's no downside to today, except if you know you like one of the three teams and they don't win. And all three teams that we're watching today are pretty intense. They fought their way through. But, of course, don't forget about what's happening in November 16th through 18th. HRX at DreamHack. Buy your tickets at HiResExpo.com. Because who knows? The teams that we're watching today, maybe they'll be there as well. I mean, with the way things have been going as of right now, all of the big international lands, Navi has been not only in the finals, but the winners of. So they're still batting a pretty good average, starting with like HRX earlier this year and then going towards our spring land. And right now they're in the grand finals waiting to potentially claim that crown one more time. Because the way things have turned out throughout the entirety of the bracket, the two teams will first be witnessing between Burrito and Envy. You no longer have an additional leg to stand on. They've made their way through the lower bracket, and they'll be fighting in a best of five to see who joins Nadis Vincere in the finals. And this is that area where there's going to be a few people, you know, like G2 fans who were probably upset a little bit earlier, SSG fans who were upset a little bit earlier. But I feel like no matter what, like you come into this, these two teams have such a big following on either side. A lot of people really don't want to see someone lose right here. And at the same time, a lot of people would like, they like the storyline of Envy being able to go to the bottom bracket and make their fight like they did in Vegas and Burrito, potentially making it to the finals and being the first international team to do so in a long time. Plus, whoever does come out of this match has a much more Di a different battle to win the whole thing compared yeah. to Navi. And with Burrito, we've known them to be able to run through that lower bracket. And we saw them face against Navi prior after it was the rematch from the PWC. But they have a lot of fight in them, that's for sure. And I feel like this is like the, the setup, right? If you're going for something and you want to run like PWC, this is the first set that would probably get you the most prepared for either side, really, to face Navi. But they were looking phenomenal yesterday. There was a point where we actually had a remake, and a lot of people at the time were like really upset about it because they were like, man, Burrito was like just about to grab a point. They could have pushed and won. And then the remake comes through, and they win 4-1. They just steamroll through that draft. And I feel like that was something that we hadn't gotten to really truly see out of them. Like They'd had some good drafts, but I want to say mainly against teams that hadn't been drafting as strongly against them. So this is definitely going to be a testament to how well they can go through that phase. And a lot of the matches that we've witnessed over these past few days were, to a certain degree, of course, won or lost within that draft. You could yeah. tell which way it was favoring where one team would have to fight extra hard to be able to get past it. And when everyone is as skilled as they are at this point within the bracket, then you can't afford to put yourself in too risky of a situation. But Hikate's brought out some pretty risky picks that worked out well for them it's always that that thin line right like there's been times where no one was playing snipers and he brings out a sniper and it is steamrolling for his team it gives them such a big advantage and then there's been times where you know he's brought out vivian and it was like man vivian of all people and he made it work made it do everything that they needed but then there are also times like yesterday when we saw the victor came through and while it looked like it might like it started out pretty good it just didn't maintain that level of greatness that you really needed to win the game. And when we saw Burrito at the PWC, they had been playing pretty much all day yeah. leading up to that last match of theirs. And they had said that, yeah, it's a whole stamina thing and you have to push through that. Today, it could be a similar situation if they want to go for the victory. Anywhere between 11 and 19 maps, <laughs> depending on if you sweep all the way through a best of five and two best of sevens or bring it the distance in each set. And that's the thing is it's, one thing to win this best of five and then go into a best of seven. But if you do win because of the way double elimination works, now we have to lose twice. They can't just take the one set. Like, well, now we can take the one set. But if you are able to get even a 4-0 right there, you have to win another four. And that's just going to be, I think, the difficult task for either of these teams is to push forward not only through here, but it's going to be a stamina test just as much. And Burrito aren't the only team that are familiar with scrapping through the lower bracket yeah. to go towards a potential victory. Envy have that experience. And let's hear what they had to say in the pregame interview. Standing here with two of our losers finalists, Team Envious is Tolki and Rubu. Gentlemen, you have fared well in the past when it came to making runs out of losers brackets, things like that. Your best one ending in Vegas. How would it feel to go up against what are some very good friends of yours in the grand finals and not as sincere? Um, <laughs> so <laughs> facing Navi is always kind of fun. It's like facing friends in, like, in an in-house game, but 
there's money on the line. But obviously facing Navi is going to be tough because they do know us the best out of any team here. We're very close with them, so we talk to each other a lot in terms of strats, drafts, and stuff like that. So we both know how each other think. It'd be really fun to face them again and get revenge, too. Would you say facing Navi is somewhat close to, like, a scrim partner because you guys know each other so well? Honestly, uh, I would say yeah, other than just being from different regions. Um, I think it's the same for Burrito. Um, we scrimmed them, like, a decent amount before coming here. So I think both of our sets... We scrimmed Burrito today, a lot. We scrimmed Burrito a lot before we came here. So we know them just as well as we probably know Navi. So, so how does it go into facing in these scrim partner matchups? How does that differ from, say, a Clown Fiesta or someone that you've never seen before? There's a lot of like mind games in this one because facing scrim partners, it's you're not really going to be surprised as hard as facing Clown Fiesta. We didn't have too much information about Clown Fiesta because they're kind of unknown to us. But Burrito and Navi, we know each other very well. And it's hard to hide secrets against each other. Uh, last question, guys. We're going to close this out, and good luck in the games. How much does this prize pool factor into your thought process today? I mean, it is twice what we saw in the PPL Spring Finals. Um, is that something that you guys have in the back of your mind? Money never really came up to me. I just wanted to win. I just wanted to win. <laughs> <laughs> Same with us. I think everyone on the team, money isn't too much of a factor. It's just we're here to win, and that's what we want to do. Hard of a champion. Thanks, Team Envious. And We'll see you guys, hopefully, in the finals. Thank you. Toki and Rubu. Rubu, the one that most people thought was the dishwasher culprit. To be fair, I do agree that if anybody in that team was going, like, the first person I would look at is like, all right, Rubu, did you do I that? voted Rubu. I so. voted Rubu. <laughs> I know there are about Honestly, if I had to fall back off of Rubu, did. I would say that it might have been Meta Pusher. <laughs> Just putting the poll, trying to divert <laughs> the attention. It was me, guys. It was rigged. But right there on your screen, looks like he's getting into somewhat of a zen state. I'm sure he has his monkeys on standby to give him some of that extra motivation he needs. I mean, this is a, a relatively big matchup, actually, when it comes down to it. I mean, Hakate was known for sniper play. His hit scan is ridiculous. He has really good aim. And the only other player who I think has really defined himself specifically by how well he aims is Rock Monkey. When it comes down to it, those two players always stood out just because they shoot so well that it makes it very difficult if you give them certain champions that they can just outshoot you. It doesn't matter if you have the counter picks. It doesn't matter what you were able to draft that counters them. They can just play that champion really well. And the last time these teams met on LAN during the last LAN, where that was a big matchup, right? It was Rock Monkey versus Hikate. Who's going to aim better? Who's going to shoot more consistently? But Envy had a great strategy to shut down their support right off the bat. They didn't have a way to recover. And now, as they said, They've been scrim partners. They yeah. know each other very well. It's difficult to bring out those surprise picks that may have worked, let's say, for Burrito in the past with the Vivian and the Victor. And that's where having multiple scrim partners is like your best friend. Because when you're playing up against someone like Envy, someone like G2, which Burrito has been doing, you learn a lot about the NA meta, maybe the EU meta, the way things are going in the PPL. You get to try some of your stuff, see how that works. But the thing is, is when you try that thing, like again, what they said is, we know you really well. We know what you want to go for. If you've been playing Kinesa a ton of against Envy, they're probably going to think, okay, they're looking for this map to go Kinesa here or something like that. This is where you have to have some of those other pocket picks where it's like, man, against G2, we were pulling out Talus versus Envy, we were pulling out Ruckus. And we've used both of those, but you don't know which one we're going to go for. And random noob that we just saw the stats for the real dishwasher destroyer, as they have revealed. He's been destroying the blaster play, too. When Drogos is taken off the table a lot, more people have been going to the Willow whenever nothing else is available. Yeah. His Bomb King was still looking great. And having that staple has been a nice balance between he and Rock Monkey. And one of the few things I think we've seen, and specifically random noob being able to pull it out as well, and it's a couple teams, I think three now, that have actually done so. Four, because Fnatic did it yesterday. Pip being able to kind of fill that same role where it's just like Bomb King, Drogos, Willow, and then if you really need to or you really can, reach down and get the pip as well. It depends on the map, it depends on the players, and kind of the draft. So Stonekeep, Envy, Envy have shown some prowess on this map of Burrito. This has been their best map for sure, and they have actually picked this one to start things off. So I think having things on that nice early footing, trying to destroy the morale of your opponent may bring out some of those interesting picks that worked for you before. And I'm kind of curious to see, I mean, Burrito banned out Frog Isle for the entire set, and I feel like Splitstone Quarry has been their downfall. Every single time they go there, it's just 
never something that they seem to have a lot of strengths on their drafts. While they can work, it depends on what the other team goes for. Envy and Navi yesterday, both of them are very, very good at kind of reading where you're trying to go with your draft and adapting to it on the fly. Being able to go here, this has probably been the one that has the most strengths for Burrito. They were the first ones to really pull out sniper play on this map to make the big difference. But a lot of teams, this is where Willow's been making a big difference. This is where Fnatic brought her out and made sure that you could kind of showcase, yes, she's phenomenal if you give her the right opportunities. This is also where we saw Victor just yeah. completely locking aim on pretty much every single shot, headshot after headshot from Hikate early off the bat, banning away the Cassie. So when you're looking at Envy and you talk about, oh, you just got to put some kind of bow in Rock Monkey's hand, for us, this is one way to try and challenge that. What I like is the idea that, honestly, between the two of them, there's a lot of control on Burrito. There's a lot of control on Envy. But I feel like it will come down to some small plays of who got the best shot. Did Hikate get a good like few headshots in a row? Did Rock Monkey get a good couple of shots in a row, depending on who they end up playing? I think that is going to be one of the big make or break moments because if those two are performing at the top of their ability, the teams always look immensely different than when even when they're just having an average game. Khan taken away as well. I think that Khan has spelled a lot of trouble whenever he makes it on through. But having a mixture, you're taking away one DPS, you're taking away one frontliner, that leaves things open for you too. And then Envy going with the same route, Buck off the table, and Makoa. A lot of the picks that we have seen work best for Burrito are still available. Furia batting, I think, the best win rate overall for the tournament. She's been doing a lot of work. Can be shut down given the right draft, the right composition, and the right players, really, when it comes down to it. It's just a different kind of focus element that you have to have in the game. But being able to pick her up, I want to say, kind of gives you that hefty little bit of an advantage. Health plus shield, and it's going to be a burst, and it's on a low cooldown, so you're going to be able to keep your team alive. But she's not been enough for teams to ban out yet. But if you get a good inflame, everything about her can make your team take that next step. Nando is locked for Rubu, which you see him get locked in much earlier for Envy, even more comparatively to some of the other teams, despite him being an overall great champion. And then Leon for that inherent anti-heal. You show Furia early, and I think that you can always expect, to, you always want to deal with healing, right? Regardless of yeah. what the enemy support is. And that's just that extra incentive to get that Leon nice at the top of the draft, you but Bomb King and Inara for Burrito. Well, I like the way things are going, because like you said, you're shutting down healing, and when you get the brand from Fernando, Leon's death and taxes, making sure you have the 90%, and just being able to apply that. Fury is not going to be able to keep Inara up as much. The shield's still going to be something you have to deal with, but normally Leon can go Wrecker, since she already has the anti-heal. Bomb King, and I feel like there's going to be one more pick. That's, I want to. I feel like a flank from them, for Hikate, something, someone yeah. that's going to be a little bit more hit scan, that they're going to grab up. It might end up being something DPS, but just going something that is going to target Leon, something to go back there, kill her off, and make sure everything stays a little bit more open while Bomb King has kind of the more big bodies. Get rid of Barrick, get rid of Fernando, get rid of Maldamba. Maldamba and Barrick both for Envy. And when you look at Burrito, and in the past, there was a time where they didn't have much blaster play. Now, Fuzzy Logic has been focusing really heavily on this, bringing out the Bomb King, bringing out the Drogos. Though, there were a couple King Bombs. Sometimes when he's getting those and he's hitting them hard and he's consistent, they have wrecked in the games. But then there's other ones. If you're not getting those King Bombs and you're getting caught up on ledges and yeah. things like that, then that's a very heavy utility that now leaves a wide opening for Envy to just exploit. I'm a little curious to see what Envy go for last, just because they don't really have a blaster, but both Willow and Drogos are going to be open. feel like Drogos and Willow, I mean, both of them, will take a little bit of a deficit since Victor's being locked in. But it's in that area that they still have a lot of control, and honestly, if Leon's hitting her shots again, that can help shut down the Victor. Terminus, though, is the one that catches my eye, because I would say out of everyone, these are the two teams that would actually run Terminus. They can run him well. And while he's not batting the best win rate right now, he still has a ton that he can accomplish when given the right circumstances. And as of right now, depending on what Envy go for, this might be the right circumstance. There's a time and place when the double Stigala does work out, but just not so far. I didn't even bother. I saw that emoji hover. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way they put that in. You need the pip for a random noob at this point. 
again, looking for a blaster, you're going to have Evil Mojo, which is going to be great for dealing with Inara Terminus. You're looking for something that can kill the big bodies incredibly fast, but Dragon Punch only hits one. You have a bunch of executes. I honestly only hit one. Unless you're going to go for Lex, it's not going to be as worthwhile. Pip fits into the meta, fits really well with way, the way Envy play it, and you hit one good Evil Mojo, that's going to be two deaths to Gala. If you can rely on your team to help with that follow-up, that yeah. is. And a lot of times you'll see just them sticking together. They're really good with their shot calling and in-game communication to make that possible. But this is game number one. It's a best of five. Whoever wins this set goes on into the grand finals while the other one has to watch from the sideline. So let the casters take it away. Thanks so much, Gabby and Gore. Once again, it is Vox and I hold shift. On the mics to start the day off. Shift, what do you think of those drafts and the double Sagala specifically? Terminus is 0 and 9. He's about to be 0 and 10. Envy is 3 and 1 on Stone Keep. They're about to be 4 and 1 on Stone Keep. That is a bold prediction there, Shift. A very bold prediction indeed. But as we get into this map, I think a lot of the critical execution for the side of Envy really relies on can this pip get good evil mojos? You've, yep. got, you've got double Sagala and Furia. That's very survivable. The thing about it is it's random noob playing the pip and him just like cause cutie and creatives and, you know, former hit showcases. He is very good at finding that catalyst damage. Although Hakate, again, on this victor has been very good. He is still running that Predator 4 card just to keep people a little bit more visible. And this is that double front line of Burrito actually pushing together on the left-hand side. And I think that the Predator 4 is pretty valuable here, but look at this. Rock Monkey trying to take a peripheral angle, get some shots into Hakate, poked out. Grenade could do a lot of damage Ooh. here. Forced out entirely. Hakate's going to go in for the kill. Can they find Leon? Looking for it. No, gives it up and Rubu finds first blood. Yeah, that's a really tough situation. You can see Hakate wanted to push through that church side, but it was just too far of a commit. He would have gotten punished. And on the flip side, Rubu and Tolki do set things up, taking down both frontliners, plus a little bit extra. The zone is good. They're up to 50% now and counting up. Shift, if I'm going to be honest with you, the hesitation there seemed like it wasn't a good thing, but Rubu is getting punished right now, does get to safety. Big heal comes through from Pip, and that's the value of this Alchemist. Without a doubt, and able to find so much long-range damage for free, and of course that burst heal, as you mentioned, and look at this, oh, it's Fuzzy Logic low, and Rubu's able to find the last shot, now looking to turn around onto Puliuli, but not going to be able to do it, still 99%, Tolki cleans up Sadhok, and I just don't think is going to be able to get there in time with this overtime. Oh, we do have a pause coming through as well, folks, by Fuzzy Logic, maybe something going wrong with the uh, Burrito Esports side, could be a communication thing, could be a technical difficulty, we'll have to wait and hear exactly what's going on there, but Team Envy taking a handed bit of control over that initial point fight there as well. And this double Stagala just couldn't really get established. And that's the tough thing. You know, this map, it is very viable to run the doubles, the double stone because the mobility doesn't play that big of an impact. You know, you can still maneuver and get from point to point. But in situations like this, where you're trying to contest the point in a more staggered fashion, it's just really difficult to find a way to get those frontliners there Good while lack. still keeping themselves healthy. Right, there's this big lack of movement ability. I mean, Crush doesn't even go that far unless you're no. really going into loadouts that augment that movement uh, distance, folks. So it's a really tough spot for the side of Brody Esports. They want to be there and just not budge to begin with. That's the kind of angle for them shift. So right. looking at this defense now, they've got these immobile front lines. Where do you think they're going to try and establish a defense on the push? This is where I think the double front line really will pay off because you can put Inara up top to contest to make sure that you keep the higher ground control with the Terminus and the lower ground or really vice versa because, again, that crush can, that Shatterfall can get you up high pretty quickly and Inara can then just use the wall to block off that, you know, payload contest. So there is a lot of things that can go well as far as the frontliners, and I think Burrito has a very good handle on utilizing those two frontliners kind of in opposite angles. So I'm really looking Looking forward to that, as I'm sure Envy will likely be the ones getting this point here in just a short bit. As we do get back into the game, you can see that's exactly what happens. Evil Mojo comes through. Overtime is ticking down. Akate getting poked out as well by Rock Monkey, who's looking for an extra kill to really open up this payload push. Cherish Heal does come through to save, and wow, look at that disengage yeah. from Burrito. It's a lot of damage coming out from Envy, though, still. That forces them to poke them all the way back into base. The damage dealt chart, this is about what I would expect. Is it is pretty even up top, and you can see the colors kind of mix and matching as we continue down this defensive path. But still, the fact of the matter is Random Noob, in this position specifically, he's going to get so much free barrage. And for me, it comes down to Vox. Who's going to get up top on this left-hand high ground for Burrito first? And that has to be somebody who's going up there. Look at this. Random Noob is uncontested. Oh. Tolki just dives straight on in, finds the slug rifle shot onto one. Pulioli about to go down as well. Double kill for Tolki, looking for a triple. Will Hanara fall? They will 
will do indeed. Rock Monkey shift. That's the push open completely for Team Envy. They're not through yet. Can Burrito recover? Oh, this is tough though. Look where Rubu is. He's right in front of the spawn, able to make sure nobody gets out for free, specifically on a mount. Not that it makes too much of a difference considering the payload has broken the base. Here comes a Dread Serpent. It finds a big disengage onto three players, but is it enough to find the kills? Well, look at this as well. Inflame comes out. Puliola dives on in. Akate looking for maybe a frag running on somebody. That's the barrage coming out as well. Random noob disengaging and Team Envy, they back off. They don't lose a single member. Rubu dives straight back on in. Finds Puliuli. Fuzzy Logic claims one in response, but Tolki's still out there fragging and Burrito Esports are dropping like flies. The dome Shield just expiring. Fernando also pretty low. Sadhawk is trying to keep himself alive behind this impasse wall, but Crimson gets taken down. The Fury of Down is not a good position as Sadhawk is low. He will surely fall here in just a second as Puliuli's power siphon will fade away, but actually good peel coming out from Fuzzy Logic. He needs to find this back line. They've got to be able to take out this mile down, but you have to be able to deal with the healing and then deal with the front lines on the side of Team Envy. That's a reanimate coming through as well. Rock Monkey does find Fuzzy Logic, but look at this. Rubu burned down by Hakate. Could be the beginning of a save here, Shift, but Fury was contesting, and now it's just up to one. Wow. Sadak comes through as well, and that might just be the save. And Sadak able to soak up that enlightenment, and now he's boxing with Tolki, but again, the respawn proximity is so good, and Sadak trying to take care of these turrets. He's falling very low and needs to find the last one. Turret he kill. just got killed by an unplayable character. Wow, that is, uh, haven't seen that since I think early days of PGS shift coming through. Fuzzy Logic back to the high ground, looking for a mid round buy here as well. With the looks of things, there's no other reason to go back to base. Big frag grenade comes through from Akate. Heal as well goes stuck back into base just to try and get some more of that coming through. And Barrage in response to Dread Serpent, but up to the high ground. Random Noob is looking for Fuzzy. This could be problematic. Nice heal to save as well. Damage comes out, but these frontliners are still just living for Burrito. Yeah, I just don't think there's enough damage here for Team Envy. A really good staggered defense for Burrito. Not typically something you like to hear in staggered, but the fact of the matter was wow. they delayed just long enough. Hakate actually sacrificed his life about 45 seconds ago just to make sure Anara could get back in time. Even though Anara did die to the turret, it was still good enough. But this push from Tolki, I think, just goes to show he's fine taking these fights. I mean, the Puliuli with this power stuff, he can't be looking everywhere at once. You see Rubu's on the left-hand side, Tolki's on the right. You can't deal with both of them. Really smart push from Tolki. And so really good positioning play from Team Envy in that initial point fight as well, when they're spreading out a lot of their damage, forcing people to look in both directions. You haven't got this big Fernando shield or a shell shield from Makoa that can kind of encompass everybody, and so you're forced to look in different directions. Right. That being said, Puliuli on defense did get a lot of really good saves on, for example, prolonging the life of Anar a few times with Four, that power siphon. Three, yeah, and the power siphon two, peel is what was one. really making Terminus so strong in the past. Not that he, you know, has really had many changes to that factor of his kit, but the fact of the matter is, with so much anti heal coming in, the sustainability for Terminus is just not there anymore, which is why he hasn't gotten a win yet this tournament. So, 1 1. Nobody on the objective just yet. Puliuli looking for a flank, maybe up to the high ground. Burrito Esports have dropped down. Team Envy control upper edges of this map, and Crimson already forced out shift. This position from Rock Monkey is really good. He's got a long line to sight. Takes down Akate. Puliuli also now low. And again, there's just nowhere for him to go. You can see Random Noob on the top right is able to find a lot of barrage from that potion launcher. And all of a sudden, Envy gets to hit the gas pedal with Rubu taking the lead. And he's getting right up the gut of this. And I don't, again, this is tough. How does Anara come back and contest against a Fernando? Also, look at this. Puliuli can't really get through as well. Hasn't been dismounted just yet. Rubu is being forced out. Barrage comes down. Could kill a Fernando, but look at that positioning shift. Blocking those shots with the shield. Sada gets back in time. Oh, Evil time. Mojo is ready. Not even necessary for the Inara as they go down the Catalyst Pit. But Random Noob is here and they are ready if necessary. Fuzzy looks for a King Bomb but you can see how far everyone peeled away. He's not going to get a chance to use that on anybody. It will be again. Brito on the point for now but here comes a Dread Serpent. Likely an Evil Mojo. And there is the combination but it's a reanimate immediately from Puliuli. Doesn't make a difference. Team Envy is able to cap. And an Immortal to boot as well. Nobody from Envy goes down. They're just going to maintain momentum here. Shift. This is so good for this team wearing the blue jerseys now on the red side of your spectator UI and as this push continues Burrito haven't found a way to put pressure onto this Leon or Pip just yet and that's <laughs> no. a problem. Yeah none at all I mean uh, there's really nothing that you can point at in specific to say that this person needs to be able to do it but when you see Fuzzy Logic not able to get the 1v1 versus Random Noob in that neutral capture keep on the right hand side of the map for Team Envy it just goes to show that the pressure is stronger for Envy than it is for Burrito. That's a really big problem right here right now. Hikate looking to charge up that barrage again might be a saving grace if they can find the Leon through that ultimate perhaps shift 
And now again, as the payload pushes forwards uncontested, we've got a minute and 40 seconds to go. Akate does find Rubu, and that'll take some of the wind out of Team Envy's sails. Just a small bit. I, th I still think you're going to see some contest at this stage of the payload push, especially with the barracks still being up. He's not exactly the worst case scenario to have there, but Enlightenman will come out. Won't actually connect for anybody as Akate does fall. And now Rain Renoub again on this high ground. He's got free line of sight into Sadak and gets taken out. Goodness me. And Rain Renoub trying to get the high ground as well. Will be up now just forcing Puli Uli to maybe drop down a contest and really open up this option for Rain Renoub to barrage from above. Wow. But instead it's Rupu from behind. Finds Fuzzy Logic probably with a fireball there. Looking to jump up and displace Puli Uli who's trying to contest while Zanara returns. Barrage comes out from Hakate. Will it find anybody? Rupu's just baiting here and Hakate is forced straight back into spawn. And really the only person who fell during that was Rain Renoub. Rupu is still a Again, putting this pressure on right up front. Furia getting low. If they take this kill, it'd be bad. And Flame actually has to be used just for the movement. And it's still a double kill for Rubu. Rubu on Fernando is a monster shift. It just keeps on going. Almost finding Crimson there as well. Still contesting. Look at Mr. Hayes' positioning. Staying safe and keeping everybody topped up with the turret there. <laughs> he's using the turret as a small body shield. And now he's going to be Phase Hayes with the long distance dreads coming out and able to find a lot of peel as well. Look at look at the double front line for Burrito. This is what they need to be doing to keep it on pressure on. But there's just so much free poke. Now the problem is that Random Noob has been taken out. This staggered defense once again shift from Burrito Esports is paying off and the just survivability of the Sagala in these clutch situations is allowing them to defend 10 okay. seconds left. Nine, Team Envy could try and eight, invest something here, but they've seven, actually already used a lot of six, ultimates on this offense five, to not four, get the payload through. You know, that's okay, though, because two, if they don't get this push, one, it's still 2-2. Two, two. It's not like it's the end of the game coming up with a 3-3. Three, three. So you might as well give it a go. Try to give yourself that two-point lead just to give that favor a little bit more in your uh, advantage. But it's still overtime, and Tolkien's still actually... Oh, he might backdoor this! No one's here! Is anyone going to be able to touch? Oh, my goodness, are you kidding me? How do they continue to let this happen? This is some really good almost split push play though. like we normally see in MOBAs right we have on the side of Team Envy your Leon rotates around the outside gets a lot of barrage damage onto Anara whilst Puli Uli's Terminus is out there just forcing back creating space because the assumption with Burrito comes down what we've got Hikate shooting at this barrack the kill's gonna come through but it just doesn't and that's not what you want to see happen with the Not barrack out there by himself, he had no movement skill, as he just used that to kind of dance around his barricade previously. It's just so tough, again, because when you're dealing with an Anara and a Terminus, if they're not already on the objective, you have to have extreme Three, sense of two, where everybody is. But on top of that, your cooldowns, if they're not there, you can't get back to point. Very much so. Now, Shift, look at this as well. Team Envy, far ahead in item economy. Anything you're noticing here that seems unusual? I mean, the Master Riding coming out does not seem super unusual because we get to the late side of things, but Evil Mojo will start off this fight first and foremost. Nothing comes through. Immortal also being used. But uli has got himself a nice line of sight to move right on through. Oh, no crush talent picked up, though, so it doesn't break down Fernando's shield, and that's a bit of a problem as Pugliuli is very low, but Fuzzy Logic finds two there, maybe. And it might have been off the back of a King Bomb. Seventh streak for the Bomb King right now in Burrito Esports with Inflame. Boosting their movement speed and damage have come back on through and now shift. They've got comeback mechanic It's a 16 streak for Crimson, which is really the biggest thing about that And that last push he almost fell down to Rubu, but was able to escape by triggering the inflame He gets that charge back so quickly and is able to utilize it there But oh Rubu will find Hakate first and foremost. Apulioli wants to challenge us I don't know if he can though. There's so much damage coming from below him. Does he realize it? Fuzzy Logic coming back at the exact right time, but Mr. Hayes and Tolki are still here to contest. Oh as well. Tolki still Still on the point. Pulioli does have the reanimate. Barricade can be activated here. It'll detonate the turret, but that's about it. Tolki will rocket boots around. Should have the, there we go, failsafe reset, but it's just not enough. Dread Serpent does come back through, but not enough time for Team Envy to answer. And Burrito Esports, they're sitting on 99%. Rubu moves back on in-shift, but can he contest? Well, Rock Monkey's on the left-hand side of the screen for, well, was for free until Sidehack was able to push on forward and get this peel. So now with Fuzzy and Anara moving up, it should be likely a good bit of zone as Burrito does capitalize. 3-2. Look at the kill streaks for Burrito and look at which members have those kill streaks. A front line of damage dealer and a support getting a lot of longevity in their lives. That's what you want to start seeing more of. And Shift, you know, it's that damage dealer that's really made the difference for me at least on this capture objective now on the payload push. Fuzzy Logic seems to be finding kills and finding efficacy as Bomb King in this round where previously he hadn't. 
Yeah, the damage numbers are definitely starting to get him more in the ball game. Before that, he was actually below just about every single frontliner with the exception of Terminus after one round. But now he's starting to get up there where he needs to be. On top of that, the pressure from Victor is good. It's just the kill capitalization that we had not seen from Fuzzy. But now he's starting to find himself that 1v1 he wants. But maybe not now. He was only 200 HP. And Random Noob will take down one. The Inflame came out once again in a very awkward spot. And it's just too much defensive sustain from Team Envy. You know, that was all as Fuzzy being able to juke out that pit for a long time there, Shift. I think they're running a high level of Shock and Aura in their loadout, which just gives you that bonus movement speed on elimination. Random Noob now is in a perfect position for defense, though. Talk to me about this height advantage that Pit really benefits from. It's the same conversation that Team Envy had when they were on offense. The fact of the matter is, when you have Pip sitting up top just firing down just absolute sheer chaos, it's hard to deal with it. It's a catalyst potion with bonus damage, but that also slows Keep in mind, so Rock Monkey's more likely to hit more shots. Even Mr. Hayes, who's really, really apt with hitting those poison spits is dealing some significant damage as well. Sad hack again, slowed down, nowhere to go. Rubu capitalizes. They need to find a way, does Burrito, to get Pip off this high ground. And Hikata has been the one to trade out there. We had Fuzzy Logic up there previously, neither of which has really found much efficacy there so far. And you can see that Puli Uli has been trying to attack the left side of this offense. Maybe it's the Terminus that needs to be up there with Power Siphon just to stop this Pip Something. from boxing yeah. back because Pip has such a good 1v1 trade potential. And the thing is, if you are getting that Power Siphon into the face of Pip, he can't obviously shoot at you, otherwise your Calamity Blast can absolutely melt through the Vulpin. But the, they need to find some way to get this high ground. This has been a very big weak point for me for Burrito is just their positioning on the high ground has not been good. But look, just as you say it, here comes Bomb King and Terminus on that left-hand high ground. This could be big as well. There's a relatively low health as well. Rock Monkey right there. Tolki slowed down, has the Dome Shield to stall if necessary. Ten seconds left to go, Shift. Team Envy have all of their ultimates up. Burrito Esports almost have the reanimate. If they can find a neutral pick here and get this payload through without having to use any of those resources, it'll be huge. It's a tough, tall task right now as Fuzzy Logic is still waiting to get healed up. Crimson finally able to get it, but a backline pressure from Rock. He's able to get one and get right back out. Fuzzy able to punish, very fortunately, but Random Noob is here to try to counter that one away. And look at that catalyst damage, 840, just from a right-click, left-click combo. And big news, though, is Fuzzy is still slaying right now. Hold that thought. Tolki comes in with a slug shot and says, absolutely not. Just double frontline and the support left on the objective. Surely the full one by one here as Random Noob goes for a big nine streak flank. And over time, whilst it is being contested, I don't think the Burrito will want to invest ultimates to really prolong this shift. Here's the other thing about Team Envy's comp, that they have a pro over Burrito. It's the simple fact that they can chase down. This was a really good King Bomb. It came right after that evil Mojo had missed just previously, and then you see the Inflame is going to get triggered very at the very near end of this fight. It's a very good double. These are the plays that Fuzzy needs to have. Yeah, I think back to yesterday when he was playing in Drox and saying he has to have a killer game. That's kind of going to be the big flex position when you have a Kate on a damage dealer like Victor. Fuzzy is the guy that everyone needs to be looking at as far as capitalizing on kills. Fuzzy is the finisher right now, Shift. That's what it comes down to. And look at this loadout as well. We have actually got no, I was completely wrong, no shock and awe in there. Might have just been the Inflame move movement speed that was coming through. Very well could have been. Reinforced Two, casing five here one. as well. The lack of crowd control that's going to be put on them, that helps them get out of this pip evil mojo even faster, and that's critical. Very critical, and is that 100% is that evil mojo? Coming in very early and aggressive. But look at this, the double Stagala pushing right through. But Sadak is very low. The Inflame has to come back out. Now baiting out the Dome Shield into a straight up King Bomb. But the Immortal was there to counter. And Envy soaked that up brilliantly. Watch out though. Bully Uli is still holding down the front line. Has the reanimate in this enclosed space. If necessary, about to go down. Could trigger it Can't here. And Gate has found random noob though. And here it comes. Rock Monkey Ooh. gets caught by that. Bit of a misplay from the Leon here. And now with a whole new life and a whole new spurt of movement speed, Burrito Esports do move straight back on in. They find a few more kills shift. They're forcing Team Envy back, and they've still got half comeback mechanic. Even from that perspective, it just looked like Rock Monkey had no idea where the Terminus fell. He was searching around to see where he needed to avoid that. He didn't see it ever and does get caught out, unfortunately. Hakata able to take down Random Noob before that evil mojo could come out, which I'm sure Random Noob is saying, actually, thank you for taking me down because that likely would not have resulted in too much. And Rubu wants to contest and will sprint right on forward to do so. See that the shield's being broken down very quickly, and Lightman comes through Evil Mojo as well. But oh my god, Puli Uli gets straight back out of that random noob in so much trouble. Rock Monkey does find Fuzzy Logic, but Puli Uli cleans him up with a Clowny Blast. Random noob has gone down, and the inflame is enough. Marino Esports, they take the objective shift, and Team Envy, they're now being matched at 3 to 3. The trigger was pulled just a slight bit late. They were trying to combo the Evil Mojo Enlightenment, and it didn't quite connect. And Burrito will punish the mistake. They're up 3 3 in the tie now, and look at this. Fuzzy 
Fuzzy Logic has a free line of sight on the high ground. And with the Inara pushing the left, this is brilliant. Where Sadok is pushing right now, he can block off so much with just one Warder's Field and then an impasse wall to peel away. This is brilliant positioning. Oh, and look at this beautiful uh, power siphon. Losing my words there for a second shift. Exactly what we talked about needed to happen. Blocking off the angle so Fuzzy Logic can go ham on Bomb King. We do see them drop to the low ground as Furia gets brought to about half health, but Burrito Esports, they're about to break this choke open and they've got at least the barrage and seismic crash to do so. And I think you need to open with the barrage just to see where people are going to split up so Fuzzy can chase. Because really, the barrage, it is a very impactful ultimate, but in this level of gameplay, you're not likely going to get a full on kill from it simply because of how slippery everybody from Envy can be when it comes to waiting for that trigger to come out and then coming back. Well, Fuzzy wants to get the high ground. Oh, Rubu wants to contest it. We'll sprint right through him. But does he have any survivability? The Inflame comes out. He's able to get the last minute burn onto Fuzzy, but this 1v1 versus Puglioli will surely not go his way, will it? Tries to retreat, finds Crimson, pops the Immortal. This could be a big <gasps> turn around. Down dunks Evil Mojo and Random Noob finds two shift. That's the turnaround which Team Envy needed, but they do use up two ultimates to be able to claim a couple of lives here. But it is a minute left in the clock and they're defending, so they will get these charges at least close if not all the way to 100. Random Noob, what a play that was. It's almost like he realizes the misplay he had from the, uh, the neutral capture point and says, I gotta bail my teammates out and able to hit a clutch Evil Mojo to save Rubu and find two. And this Immortal's been used as a bait tool multiple times now throughout this game so far, Shift. I love the way in which Rubu says, all right, come and get me. Stalls out and then Team Envy claps right now. 30 seconds left in the clock, as you just heard. Fully on, on the high ground, Fuzzy Logic looking to find a way in. And Rubu this time around isn't ready there to force him out. Here comes King Bomb. Down to the low ground. Dives straight on into the dome shield. Can't find Tolki. Retreats. Grumpy Bomb is at the ready. Hikate. They'll kill either Barrage or to use shift. No way to bunker bust that open. Rubu might go down here. Puli Uli can reanimate. Will they pull the trigger? Goodness gracious. Rubu lives again with one tick of HP. And Rock Monkey able to punish and come right through the middle like a running back with an open field in front of him. Finds three kills. But man, that King Bomb channel, I don't know if it was Fuzzy trying to get up top, but this was a brilliant evil mojo. Able to save his teammate and find one more, and I believe Hakate had to bail out immediately after. Just really good awareness from Random Noob. You know, I love the boost spray after that specifically. I don't think that anybody expected this pip to come just blasting Surprise. down from the skies with evil mojo. It's like, hey. You can't forget about Random Noob. Never forget about Random Noob. He's watching and he's waiting, and he's still in the top five damage dealers right now, exceeding the Bomb King overall. Yeah, 87% on that channel, by the way, the Evil Mojo that we questioned. Would it have been worth the double ultimate? And it looks like at least the Evil Mojo, yes. The Immortal a little bit further away, but man, I would love to see them give this Evil Mojo Enlightenment combo again. Uh, just if they can find a way to properly trigger on the correct targets. Oh, it doesn't even make a difference because that two seconds is more than enough to get a full enlightenment charge off. Big flank coming through from now from Random Noob. Looks at the high ground has been spotted out by Hikate and Crimson. Will retreat briefly to this sort of, not cathedral area, but this other side church area. Hikate looks for some more damage here. Needs to find a frag grenade potentially onto Random Noob if they want to deal some big damage. But Burrito Esports have handedly taken control of the keep shift. Yes, and they, well, the thing is, Envy was okay with it. They swung around the left-hand side of the church just to make sure they didn't get claustrophobic in that keep area, and Pugliuli, even with the Inflamed, is getting low. He does get a really clutch heal from Crimson, and Crimson with the Wings of Wrath able to get away. Wow, what a situation. Random Noob finds one. Fuzzy Logic after they take down one of their own, but Rubu does take out Crimson. That's no more healing for Burrito Esports, and Team Envy have five up. They have to retreat right now. Sadak goes down very easily, very handedly. 54% and rising for Team Envy shift, and the Evil Mojo, the Immortal, the Enlightenment, and they find him. That's such a big play right there, but they aren't able to take down Pugliuli. The Evil Mojo was correct, but there just wasn't enough damage there. Immortal coming out to save the Enlightenment. It's 90%, but Burrito's coming back with some capture of their own. And they've also got the reanimate shift. They've got a second life for Pulioli right now. If maybe Rock Monkey can get around behind, take out Hikate, it'll be a good look for them. But watch this. Crimson spots where they are. Fuzzy Logic already flanking around, looking for somebody. Random move being stunned out briefly there by a Pyre Strike. Can't really find much for South Fuzzy Logic and does actually end up taking out Pulioli, who will be forced to reanimate. Yeah, but he's able to Tolky. find Tolki as well. That's the big thing. You need to find the back line if you're random new, but he's got it. Oh, but Akate is able to peel away. Now I don't know if there's anyone in from Envy who can really contest this. And somehow, some way, Burrito make it work. Oh, you could see Shift right at the end there. The Manifest Destiny slide just a little bit too late to even take that into overtime. But let's talk about that random new play right there at the end. Dives in his pip. We would expect an evil mojo to come out, but it just wasn't charged. That looked like desperation. No, I mean, he needed to make a play in the back line. It was the right call to go, but the fact was... 
where they lost that point was the evil mojo before Rock Monkey could get up to convert onto Puliuli. If that's the trigger, if they find Terminus there, he has to make a very tough decision of, do I reanimate when no one is around just to get the contest, or do I try to trust my team? The decision never had to be made, and I would have to say it, Envy just choked just a slight bit on the ultimate. Well, folks, it's a close game to start things off in this heated lower bracket final set. Desk, what do you think of all of that, and will, it go, will the rest of it come down to the wire? Well, I know I was on the edge of my seat the entire time watching that, especially 4-3. It was so intense, and that last fight came down to which ultimates were getting the most use and then trying to find whoever was hitting from the back line. I didn't count all of them, but I remember two distinct kills, and it might have been the only two, with Reanimate that were grabbed there with the Terminus Rock Monkey at one point in the third round or the round prior to the end, and then at the tail end being able to pick up Tolki as well with that. So being able to get caught, or I guess not getting caught in that ult, is probably the biggest thing Envy needed to do that did, just did not happen. And the evil mojo that if you don't have the follow-up, we said this on the desk before yeah. going in, is yes, those can be great if everybody is in unison to always follow up. Them. And then in that moment, not everyone was in that collective spot. And also, Hikate, they're trying to find him. Where was he hitting from? Where was he dishing the damage? And in that, as everything was getting captured from the frontliners, he was still able to have his impact without getting too caught out. And I feel like a lot of what Hikate was able to accomplish was making up for the deficit of Fuzzy Logic until that last round, right? Like every round up to that, Fuzzy Logic had some okay moments and then some not so great moments and nothing that was like, man, Fuzzy Logic making the plays. It was always just cool, you could have done a little bit more there, like every single step of the way. So Hikate, I think, filled that gap until you finally hit that point with the Bomb King where everybody was working together for that last 3-3. I think that Hikate is getting to be on things he's very comfortable with, with these hip scans. Fuzzy Logic has a lot of talent as a DPS player. I think his most shining moments are when he's on the flanks, when he's brought out things like the Buck, which was banned away, and the Zin. But I like also them accounting for that blast damage that they need, and he has had stellar games on those. It just hasn't been that every single game is at that caliber just yet. And I will say, assuming that Shift is correct, that's Terminus' first win of the tournament. Yeah. Out of, I think, 10 games. Who knows if they'll bring it to the second map. Terminus, not as popular throughout this LAN. Didn't get a lot of wins, but now with Envy with the map pick, bringing it to Bright Marsh. This is somewhere that Terminus could work. He's been brought yeah. out on Bright Marsh, but still, as you said, no victory until the last game. And I'm really curious as to where Envy want to take this. Because again, last time, our last map, we were talking about a lot about Willow. We talked a lot about Bomb King as a blaster, Pip as a blaster, and Drogos as a blaster. All of them, I think, are very important here. Bomb King and Drogos, I think, take my, a precedent in my mind over the rest of them. Then it would probably be Willow, then Pip. But if you want to run something like that, this is a good spot to do it. Furia, the first thing to go. Just too much for Envy to deal with. A couple of those inflames really amplified the fight turning moments of Brito, especially when you're on the defense, even though Tokli did get that that backdoor sliding in the <laughs> payload. But early on when they I mean, were they getting were that 3-1 after that too. Yeah, so Brito had to be very consistent with their play from that point forward using comeback mechanic and even the half mechanic for their favor. But Burrito, it's time for them to ban things away. And Envy taking this spot for this ban, they can't ban both Makoa and Buck anymore. Maybe the Buck will be available again. Yeah, it's going to be, I and mean, that opens up that big question at the beginning, right? Who do we pick? What What's going to be the counter? Do we have something that's going to be big for us? Taking away Furia, again, Crimson, one of the big threats, I want to say, during the last game was not only the inflames, but the fact that I think he was on a 16 streak, I think is the number I remember. Like, he was just not dying for the longest time. And so you're going to try to force him onto something maybe a little less safe, something that's going to be easier to pick off. But as long as he's alive back there, he's going to be comfortable. And with the way things have gone, I mean, that's three front lines off the bat. Three indeed. And the Inara, I think a lot of it just being those unkillable moments and even the rest of the team willing to sacrifice in that last game so that Inara could stay alive. And that's just too much focus that you're taking from your team onto this one target. So and be and on this map with Bright Marsh, she can do that even better, <laughs> live even better, block off even better. But Barrick as the first pick, what do you think of that? I feel like Envy have kind of looked at what front lines can give control on this map. Barrick, 
and Nara, probably the top two. They ban the one that they don't want, and then they grab the one they think that Burrito, even if they have it, they know on the side of Envy that they can perform well with it. Again, Tolki was looking phenomenal on that. The only time I think there was a real big deficit to his barrack play in the last game was when he died to that reanimate. And even then, it's like, well, there's no cooldowns, there's no healing, there's no team nearby. You don't have the health bar or anything to really get you out of there. It's kind of a just victim of circumstance. Now Burrito get Fernando and Leon, and Rubu's Nando during that last game, which we've seen before, of course, it was just insane how he was spreading across the map in the same way that we saw Thiel do in previous matches. Yeah. But Buck not banned away, so Envy take him in the second pick. And that's kind of what I was curious as to whether or not that was going to go through. That's going to be picked into Leon again. A lot of good shots, at least at anti-heal. The biggest problem is killing Buck before he kills you. He still gets the damage reduction. He still deals a lot of damage. And I'm assuming this is going to be Rock Monkey. And we have seen him have stellar performances with this Buck to the point where some of the games they have won, even if it doesn't look like Envy should really be winning the rest of the, the fight, that has been Rock Monkey being able to come and be like, all right, here's a triple kill on Buck. What's up? I'm here. Set up my team for success right off my back. The Burrito have been committing to this Bomb King pick. But Ceres as well, gradually over the days of the Summerland, she's made an extra appearance here, an extra appearance there, now within the first set of the day. I think she falls in a similar vein to Furia, in my mind, where it's, you've got pretty good safety, you can keep yourself alive, your heal's on an incredibly low cooldown, you can cancel channeling it early, so you can try to get some, some somewhat bursty heals. She's got really, really high amount of healing, but it's very difficult, I think, to make her work at that level as consistently as Furia. Ah, this is tough from Envy. Random Noob on his Drogos. You got Rubu on the Ruckus. Buck here for Rock Monkey. Ah, this lineup is scary. And then Terminus last lock in for Burrito. Burrito, I want to say taking a little bit of a risk. I mean, a lot of their drafts, some of the stuff that they had worked last game. Some of the stuff didn't feel as comfortable. Envy, on the other hand, like you said, pretty much staple picks all across the board. Everything they've gotten is successful, very specifically on Bright Marsh. You can tell this is their map pick because they knew pretty much everything they wanted coming into this. And it's game number two. This is a set that I could expect to go the distance, potentially, yep. especially if Envy locks into these comfort picks for themselves. So let's just hop right into the action. Thanks, Gabby. Thanks, Gore. Shift, i got to ask you here. Where or oh, where is the Willow this set? Breeder doesn't play Willow, and I think the Drogos just fits better into Random Noob's play style, especially with a buck. That's going to be really, really important is can he get good, sustained, long-distance poke to allow the buck to penetrate? I think this is actually a really smart draft from Envy. See, it's a really tricky one as well because you're playing into Le uh, Leon if you're running combustible Drogos. You're a little bit safer with this peak and poke fire spit explosion than you are playing a Willow, which yep. we seem to be demolished and just really not... Not a playable character. Especially on this map, too. We've, oh, seen, yeah. we've seen that time and time again on this map you specifically. Go so. flight, you go straight back down again. Yeah. You're pinned to the wall by this Leon. But really, I think a lot of this comes down to how much anti-heal can Team Envy get online. They've got a Ceres with Mortal Reach that they're playing into that's going to top this Terminus off like nobody's Five. business. Yeah, and that's going to be the big key, keeping Three. Terminus alive. Three. Again, uh, there's a reason why Terminus has not so won uh, many huge. games. <laughs> Just the one from There's last one, one. yeah. So I, I think that's going to be really key. I mean, Ceres actually has a very good win rate. She's 3-1, and one, I think, overall in the tournament. So that's definitely going to be something to look at for Crimson. A lot of combo potential as well. And Pooli Uli right now is trying to sniff out Rock Monkey. He's trying to get to the back line, but it's forced out here up on the high ground. Rubu on this rock is stripping that away from Burrito. Put some bot potential down towards the side of the red team. But so far, 27% for Team Envy. They've got their Barrack on point. First Burrito one. Esports looking for a way in, but Rock Monkey has already found fuzzy logic. That's a lot of persistence from Rock Monkey. He wanted this back line to start things off, and you saw he got poked out very quickly, just backed up, went right through that little apartment complex, I guess we'll call it, and then jumped right back in again, found a really huge kill. I know Shift Burrito Esports are playing so passively right now. I know there's a lot of damage potential that they're playing into, but it seems that they're holding the trigger a bit too much here. It's 99% for Team Envy. One minute and 43 seconds for that first capture uncontested burrito need to find a way to really start harassing members of team envy rather than just letting them have their way here and you know even watching them talk burrito while they're doing this draft they have yet to play this map this tournament which i think says a lot this is definitely a little bit of comfortability for envy as they've had a couple of more games here and you could just kind of tell that burrito just looks a little out of sorts at times when it comes to the front line rotation they don't have the same ability because they don't have the ruckus to kind of move so freely as they're used to here though able to clean up most in the backhand of a Dealing a lot of damage, but look what Rock 
Monkey is. Rock Monkey's fine and content just to wait here. Sees Puliuli coming around, but he's in a bit of a bad spot here. Doesn't really want to re uh, engage. Wants to be able to use the leap to safety. And that actually Whoa. just distracts pretty well. Burrito Esports, they take their eye off the ball, and all of the respawns from Team Envy are coming through. Look at Rubu's positioning straight into the back line. Can they find the Bomb King? I don't think so, Shift. I don't really understand that positioning from Sadhawk either. He was going in to try to punish Buck for being where he was, but again, Buck has more mobility, and he had teammates around him. Sadhawk used his Shatterfall to get in, and everyone just looked at him and said, all right, thanks for the free kill. And now with that in mind, Burrito Esports, they've lost one of their main defenders here, and they're letting this payload push free until just around this corner shift where they're able to better defend because of natural cover. Out comes Convergence, but Sadhawk's already gone down. And that was the play they wanted Sadhawk to be there so they could get themselves a big swipe, and now it's the Buck Wild in the back line. Crimson will be forced into the Shadow Travel, but it isn't save Fuzzy Logic, and it's a triple kill. Could he find the quad? Random will clean it up. My goodness, Rock Monkey, good trigger discipline there. Still on the way shift, 56 seconds left to go. All of Burrito Esports waiting on respawns. I mean, Sadak is, is here, can dive into Contest, and I think that'll be what they elect to do. Shadowfall can close the distance here, but it was only the Buck Wild, and now the Hexify that's being used. Oh no, Pooley Uli in trouble. That shield will save his life temporarily. Can Rubu escape? The Mending Spirits do come through. Down goes the Dome Shield. Burrito Esports are being forced back. Team Envy, they're looking for this conversion. There's still a Dragon Punch that they absolutely need it, but Random Noob's got a free line of sight. He's found two already, looking for potentially the third, but it's Random Noob and Rock Monkey cleaning up together. The Immortal is a mere informality at this point as Rock Monkey, are you kidding me? Upside down, up in the air, doesn't make a difference. He's cleaning everybody up. Back-to-back -back triples, and this feels like as well as we see this first Bok while enabled triple coming through shift that Rock Monkey's taken a bit of what we said in previous rounds to heart, saying we don't feel like he's as effective on the on the Bok as he was on both champions. Today, very much a different story. And again, the ability of him to do this comes in the back end of Random Noob hitting big Spitfires from downtown. You don't get the same kind of pressure from Willow. Yeah, there's some seedlings that are annoying. Yeah, the dead zone's annoying for Crimson, but the damage is so much more impactful from a Drogos to allow Buck to do things that like this. And that's what we're really seeing here right as well. It's not point control that Team Envy are going for because they have Tolkien. He can just contest and play around the turn yeah. It's take out the back line first, deal with this Ceres as well. It's been such a thorn in their side in terms of keeping the, the Terminus alive, and at that point, it's just easy pickings from there on out. Look at the front line for Brito, both of them going just into Rejuvenate, and there's a lot of damage they need to be negating as well, so it's the kind of forest between a rock and a hard place. Puliuli wanted to push around the flank, Sadhaka will use the Shatterfall to go up top, but again, he's got no mobility now, and he gets easily punished. Oh, 57% uh, of the way shift right now for Team Envy, and as they dive into the back line, Rubu takes out Akari with Rock Monkey helping out there, Bulk Up will come through very quickly, and oh, Tolki is still on the objective. And that, on top of that random dude, look where he's floating. Sitting in the back line for free. Who's going to contest this? Pulioli, that shield's not going to block from behind. Sadhack already used reanimate. Has to use the power siphon. And Team Envy gets this for free. And here's a Shatterfall right into the rocket of Random Noob. We'll happily take that. Plus one more. Goodness gracious, Team Envy is steamrolling. Easy claps in chat right now, Chef. Team Envy doesn't look like they've got really got any difficulty as they do get the second capture in a row. Five minutes and 35 seconds. Three to zero. This might be one of the fastest games we've seen all land. Now, is there any way that you see Burrito Esports able to hold on here? Is there an ultimate combination which they could use to try and make this defense? If they need to use their ultimates in a staggered fashion, they need to try to find a way to get the defense moving quickly. If they can find some way to get a convergence off now, that would be big. Use Enlightenment later. Use the King Bomb later. Just keep it staggered. You don't want to use everything, but my goodness, they, they're just melting. And again, the front line is just so peeled away. They do not look like the normal front line. When they're running these non-mobility kind of front line combos, they have not performed as well as when they have something like a Barrack or a Ruckus. Oh my good shift. Rock Monkey is on a 20 streak right now as well. 10 0 and 10 being enabled by Rubu, who's often diving with him at this point. And as you said, capitalizing on really big picks made by Random Noob TV. Oh my goodness, no. Can't get out of there. Rock Monkey does go down to Pooley early at last. Dome Shield looking for a convert, uh, conversion here. Dragon Punch oh! comes through. <laughs> Fuzzy Logic will detonate though, and that's a save right there at the end. Burrito Esports through tooth and nail. Hold on with 10%, 5% left on this push. Random Noob was just searching for a target, any target. For unfortunately for him, he finds a king bump. <laughs> That's kind like, of the yeah. That's a little, little bit problematic, shall we say, there, Chef? Only well, slightly. We've got 58 seconds left on this push. Team Envy are coming back in. They did use all their ultimates on push. They haven't got any of those charged up and ready. And Burrito, they're closer to out of everything to reanimate, which is relatively slow charging here. Yeah, Team Envy used a lot for that, but they wanted to get the victory in that instance, and they still have, again, they have better non-ultimate fights than Burrito does simply because the damage is so hard to deal with. Look at this, Rubu setting up on this little pedestal here, right on top of the 
Not sure what's in there. Maybe it's a, a scroll hot or something going around there looking for a flank as well. Has two missiles in hand. Straight up damage onto Puliuli and Crimson. Crimson gets hit by a fire spot as well. Random noob cleans up Puliuli and already this is the defense from Burrito Esports being eaten away. Gobbled up by Team Envy. No way to come back and hold. It will be the reanimate to try and do so, but Sadak loses all of his Later, health. Later, dude. That's just not wow. what you want to see in Envy. That's the easiest push that I think they've had all tournament. That was clinical, surgical. The draft was great. The execution was great. And from the get-go, I just don't think Burrito really had any real responses, especially when Random Noob is doing that. Yeah, and i got to take it back and say that um, Random Noob playing the incredible Drogos really helped set up, as we mentioned, Rock Monkey's buck. And Rock Monkey sure does have a buck shift. What a performance yeah. there. I think that was only one death the entire game. Yeah. We saw that one yeah. where he got picked up, I think, just by Fuzzy Logic's Bomb King, a little bit out of position, and then nothing else for the rest of it. This really imp impressive play, but as we mentioned, it's all being set up by the rest of the team. That's the threat that Buck brings. It's the ability to capitalize on the low health targets, and when the attention is being drawn by the front line as well, especially on the side of Envy, it's difficult to deal with. And I gotta ask, Gabby Gore, what do you think of that game too? Well, buck on buck on buck, my man. You're actually right about the fact that it is the team setting things up and enabling this aspect of seeing a triple kill into a triple kill to secure the push. That's whew, pretty spicy. I mean, you on Envy's map pick, give Envy literally the draft they would have wanted on this map The draft ever. is sick. And it was just one of those things that when you come through with it, every single one of those is either a comfort pick or something that's really, really good on Brymar, something that Envy has shown success with in the past. That went about the way I expected it to go after we saw. I mean, even the, just the first, like, 30 seconds of that, you see the draft, you see who's playing, and you see the way the game is going to go. You get a good feel from it pretty much immediately from Rock Monkey. Yeah. This buck from Rock Monkey, pretty insane. Everything just smacking into the face of the enemies. This was the map that last year during fall, Rubu on the Ruckus had gotten the pentakill. And then you have all these other picks that work really well for them too. Obviously the Drogos, the Maldamba, and then Tolki on the Barrack has been playing that even more and more often as these matches have went on. This was really kind of back to basics for Envy, right? Where it's just like, you know what? We're just going to play what we know how to play. And we're going to play it on a map we know how to play, and there's not much you can do about it. There were so many moments where Rock Monkey just hits a headshot. And, like, the thing is, is Buck already does a lot of damage. He has a lot of healing for himself. He has the damage reduction. But when he's hitting those headshots consistently, which is what Rock Monkey was doing, you don't even have, like, the time to react properly, especially if he's doing it in the middle of a Buck Wild where it's just being headshot, 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 headshot. Two people are dead. No one knows what they're doing. They're all looking over at the payload, and he's standing behind them. He was just chilling for a lot of it, right? The rest of the team opened it up and said, okay, now do what you got to do. And he looked around. Okay, nobody's locking me down right now. They're doing their job, so pop, pop, pop. All I have to do is make sure that I'm <laughs> very precisely on point for all of these, and that's exactly where he was. But Random Noob on another pick that is very powerful for him. You gave Random Noob Jogos. I wonder what you could expect from all these. <laughs> the way everything has been going, it's, it's very specifically, again, that Envy had things they were not only comfortable with, but they've made look good on several maps and several iterations against top teams. And you put them pretty much all into one area where they are going to be able to show that prowess. This was, again, another phenomenal performance, but I'd say kind of par for the course from what I would expect out of Random Noob when he gets Drogos. That's the thing right now is it's not just about, hey, the dragon punches, can I land that? And it's the consistency throughout the play and being able to work with those projectiles. And he was hitting massive targets on multiple, especially on a map like Bright Marsh that lends itself towards corralling some of the enemy, especially around the capture of very end towards the bottom portion of the push. Then you can really angle it in a way to get as much of that AoE. Now they're going to go into different areas. I'm still curious, you know, Splitstone Quarry is one that has been a big deficit for Burrito, so if Envy take another loss in this set, I feel like that's probably where they will start to guide things, but this is like the turning point for Burrito. This is where they need to start picking it up, and again, a lot of it has been feeling like the draft, and I'm kind of curious, you know, we saw some iffy drafts yesterday from Fnatic. I think we saw some iffy drafts against Burrito from Fnatic as well, so going up against a team that studies their drafting more than anything and has a lot of flexibility again that makes it inherently difficult if you do not play the map immediately like the first band you lock in has to be for this map for this team and 
when you're going into game number three, Burrito did pick up game number one, so it's one to one right now. And they're probably hoping for that flip up where we're okay with going to game number five if it's just that alternation, yeah. because that would still go in their favor. You don't necessarily have to get games back to back if you take that first one. But still, I think that when you had the terminus worked well in game number one, game number two, not so much. So then how do you adjust? Do you think they should switch something up from the Bomb King? Is it frontliner picks? What picks were not really doing it for you? I mean, Terminus, I feel like he's like the theory is there, right? I understand the thought behind it, but it is not working in practice. And that is just one of those things. Like, you have to accept the fact that now he is going to be 1 on 11. He has only got the one game. It was a 4 3 at the very tail end of it. And you got lucky with a couple of vaults where Envy were mispositioned, right? You can't really rely on something like that happening, especially now that I would say most of his best maps are kind of out of the works. There's still a couple you can go to where, you know, Jaguar falls. This will work for Terminus, but. You don't want to put everything on him. Try to flex around with it. If you do get a good draft that fits with it yesterday, we saw it come through. Again, a lot of damage and a lot if you give it the right opportunities, he can do a lot. But I don't see why continue going back to it when I feel like you could grab something else for a little bit better. I really wanted to see Fuzzy Logic on the buck, but yeah, that, that would have been another big pickup. And because Buck was the second pick for Envy, but it is a lot of pressure when you're putting that first pick onto a player. But they first picked Bomb King in a couple of their drafts yesterday in the prior days where that's something that you've been able to see kind of go a bit later in the draft. And I think by not picking up the Buck early, they had to have known that was going to the opposite side. And it's just one of those things, especially with the way things went specifically yesterday. I mean, we're seeing Androxus come through and look phenomenal. We're seeing things other than the Bomb King that have been looking really good. And I'm just kind of curious as to why Burrito... It seems to be like they're going back to picks that have worked in the PGS, have worked in the past, but they just aren't playing them that well right now. Leave them where they are switch to something else. And now you're going to Serpent Beach. We are in game number three, so that means the map pick is that of the loser of the previous game. So Burrito choosing to go the way of the Serpent. And even though I just harped on it, I actually wouldn't mind if you do get a buck. If you can get a Bomb King, this is going to be a map good for him. I would say put the Bomb King way lower in the draft. He's not something that you need to grab up. I don't think Envy are going to prioritize it as much. Drogo's, I think, is definitely where they kind of want to draw their line right now. This is just a map that you have to be prepared for. Burrito, again, some success on here yesterday, but you know we've seen this several times where it's like, well, you get a win, it's a 4-3 win, then you get a few losses and they're all 4-0s. You don't expect to win easily. And I feel like this time, Buck's probably going to get banned away again. And Burrito choosing to ban away two frontliners, perhaps feeling a bit comfortable with that because they were planning on going with things like the Terminus, but you're one for one right now with that Terminus pick and yeah, maybe so, but I think that you're also going to be vulnerable if Envy decide to go for something like a Willow or that can just completely ignore some of the strength that Terminus offers. Another thing that, now that I'm thinking about it, kind of bothers me about the last draft, and that is it. It feels like Burrito's been putting a lot of weight on Furia. Having that burst heal is big. Envy went with a lot of burst damage, a lot of damage that is just going to be one and done kind of deal where it's like I'm going to hit you once and you're going to be close to dead and unless you get that amount of healing back immediately you aren't going to live and you're having a channeled heal if you have something like a Genos a Ceres it's just not going to get quite as much Ceres can kind of close that gap but I just don't think it works anywhere near as well so I'd like to see if they can kind of guide themselves away from something like that Strix band and the very specific lockout against Hecate that I think falls back down to what Envy said earlier. They're scrim partners. They know each other really well, and I feel like I know that Hakate wouldn't mind playing a little bit of Strix on this map. Kinesa's not too bad on there. There's interesting spots, especially with the change to the scopes that happened about a month ago now. It's in that area of you have less spots, I think, that are as beneficial as a sniper. You have to be very careful with your positioning. Strix is going to be able to make that or utilize that a little bit better than Kinesa, but she still has the mobility advantage. So Makoa also eliminated from pick potential. Going heavy into the pink time for this. And Furia, the last one. Crimson is a very skilled support player, so it's not like he needs the Furia to be impactful. But then make sure that within your composition, you're accounting for the fact that you don't have that double up appeal. Honestly, that kind of feels to me like Burrito just got what they wanted in a way. Khan yesterday looked 
great on this map. They did have it, I think, with the Furia, so it was one of those things that if you could set that up, that kind of scenario, I mean, you're going to be finding a lot of success, even if you have something like a Will on the other side. You have a lot of sources of healing, so as long as you're not in the dead zone, it's going to be good. But being able to go with the Leon is going to help try to shut that shut that down since you know they're still going to be going for a support. There's going to be two sources at least on the side of Burrito from healing. And Khan, man. He has been so great when you hold off on that ultimate till the start of a capture. And then whoever the biggest threat is, whether it's a point tank or even just the big damage dealer that's not leaving anybody alone, eliminate them. And then you can gain so much ground in objective. I'm glad that Barracks there because I had a really, really bad feeling that Burrito were going to go back to Terminus. Because again, <laughs> it's like there's a couple maps where I feel like you might see him played where he has found success in the past. This is one of them. But I really want to see them stray away from that pick. It's just, again, you're bringing an axe to a gunfight. You're not going to have the range advantage. There's a lot that Envy are doing right. In this map, it's even less likely than Stone Keep for you to get kills off of your reanimate. So you can't even rely on that kind of burst damage making a big swing in your play. You go for the Maldamba, you get the Barrack, you get the Khan. You have some good point control. You had a little bit of burst, uh, boosted damage coming down from the Battle Shout. And now you get to kind of flex around a little bit for those last couple picks based on what Envy grab here. And I think the last map, Bright Marsh, if you're going to bring Terminus anywhere, that's one place to bring him. But didn't work. Now you're going to somewhere that's even le less advantageous for him. So you might as well steer clear. The Drogos again for Envy, though. They're having to take these ban slots for things like the Buck and then the Mako. And Envy's not going to ban away because they want the Drogos. So now Random Noob has this once more. They don't have too much to naturally hunt Drogos down. This is where we saw Androxus yesterday. And honestly... I think Androxus would be high on my list to pick up here because if you take away the buck, you need someone who can track down that Drogos, get rid of him, take him out of the sky. And you literally got rid of the guy who has a bird shot able to do that. So you do go for the Androxus. And again, a lot of it's going to fall on how well do you perform? How is your shooting feeling today? Because that is pretty much all there is for Androxus. And we've said that before with Androxus, it's okay. Are, are you going to be able to hold it enough for this? Is this going to be fine for you? And Physiologic come through in the clutch in the past with that I mean, yesterday yeah so and then we the death said the same exact thing i don't know it's gonna really come down to that and then hey he pulled through but nando last lock in for envy i said it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was on that death that is it's again it's the same thing when you see that so fernando coming through a lot again of staple picks here for envy but burrito have things that have brought them success not only on this map but just in the past in general if Androxus falters, especially at the beginning, it's going to be a slow burn. You might get to, again, third round where, hey, we grabbed a point, or you might just fall off the face of the earth. I'm ready for this. It's 1-1, effectively becoming a best of three. So game number three is underway. So we've got some interesting drafts here, to say the least. I think when we saw that Androxus locked in and Fuzzy going away from the Bomb King, which has been a staple for a while here, and also the Cassie, which hasn't been played at all by Burrito this land. 0-2 oh, on Cassie, but they've banned it out, I believe, four or five different times. It, that just go. goes to show that they just do not like playing up against, but also playing the Cassie. I think this really comes down to two really powerful picks on damage that really need to have a huge performance here. Well, based on those Cassie picks previously, my mistake there, it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was Fuzzy Logic who played those previously, right? Just from memory, at least one of those times. Hikata used to be known for his Cassie play. We'll see if maybe there's a bit of a difference coming this time around. But looking at the initial talents, everything pretty standard here. Itemization shift. Oh my goodness, the Haven's coming out already. Oh, why not? Everything that you're going to be going up against is direct damage. And that's your, again, that's your win condition for Burritos. Can you get the Androxus and the Cassie online? I like the picks a lot, especially on Drogos and Ceres. The so survivability is going to be key. Also, Team Envy, they've done their homework from yesterday. There was a turn and burn strategy used with Overpower by Burrito, where they pull in the Inara. But now with a Fernando, Immortus is going to mitigate a lot of that. Rubu goes aggressive here. Fuzzy Logic puts on the pressure. Yeah. But look at this flank coming out of Tulki. Yeah, this is really good. Again, just, it's where do you look? You can even see Fuzzy is not exactly sure where he wants to position himself. Think about that stretcher that Puliuli has. He had to back up completely. Now Rock Monkey is all up in the back line, keeping Akate at bay, trying to find the last shot on Akan, and he will drop away. Random new picks up one. Crimson narrowly available to or able to avoid that fire spit damage, but a lot of fireball potential here coming through. Doesn't even need it. Rock Monkey cleans up one. And Team Envy there, 60% rising. 
wall at the ready shift because what else do you need to do as Tolki right now? Nothing. Just put up the nice wall, time it out very nicely, make sure you watch your left and your right corners. This should likely be a pretty easy cap for Team Envy. Bulili will give it a go. Fuzzy Logic is Ooh, trying to get to the back line to find the Androxus, but again, there's just not enough peel for him to get back there for free, and Tolki's happy to sit here and take this fight versus Barrack. Rubu is very low, though. Could go down in just a second. Out comes the Salvo. Sadak closes the gap, tries to find the kill around the corner, but gets boosted back up to full. This is incredible. Tolki tries to stand strong on the objective, though, does so as Sadak goes down a round of news. Fire spit. Out comes the scout from Cassie. Fuzzy Logic has to make a big play here, Shift. There's just so much zoning coming out, but even just the pressure, that was actually really smart from the Androxus from Fuzzy Logic. Just He didn't even go in for a kill. He did, You saw him dash back and try to find a way to keep everyone distracted, and they are. Random Noob actually pushing Pulioli towards their team by feigning out that Dragon Punch. And a big Spitfire, but Akate, who's full HP in the back line for free now, is getting himself cleaning up some kills. Able to find two. 60% to Team Envy's 99 right now. Shift and Akate needs a bit of a heal here. Gets it from Khan as well. And that Battle Shout buff Cassie is certainly something that you don't want to contend with if you're one of these fragile damage dealers. Seismic Crash coming out before the Dome Shield could be there, and Sadak gets absolutely deleted, but Rubu's able to fall, but again, that, he, they did the job. They got everyone off of point. Mr. Hayes keeps everybody alive, and they get the first point. It was narrow, but they still got it. And that could have maybe been, as well, that could have been Burrito coming back in the contest if they'd been able to kill Rubu whilst they were overpowered by Khan a bit faster. I'm getting a sense of deja vu shift with how that very first one, pre-restart, went for Burrito versus Navi, yeah. where it looked like it could have been their point, but Team Envy just space them away from the objective. Yeah, the, the Fnatic was not able to really handle that with all that pressure coming in from Brito, but Team Envy is doing a much better job, I would say, with the double front line here to know who's soaking up what and when and where, most importantly. Tolki getting very pushed out, but Random Noobs here again. This combustible Spitfire combination is just adding so much pressure. Was Tolki running the Toaster Strudel and Nara there where he just pops up off the back of the wall? Again, a lot of elevation off that. That might bring a really interesting aspect to this payload push if Tolki can appear where people are least expecting them, but one minute and 35 seconds on this push shift, and we have Dragon Punch back up again. They've got the Immortal here, they've got the Enlightenment. What does Burrito have to hold them off? They need to get the high ground, and Random Noob will try to find that top left-hand side, but does get taken down by Pulioli. Sad hack low on the right side defensively, but Tolki up top is kind of in a weird spot right now, and he's got to try to find a way to survive. Oh, Rock Monkey wants to get right in the face of Sadhawk, but will get punished by Akate again, who's been doing a very good job of sitting in the back line and making sure that he is punishing any over-aggression that he sees. And it's really good work so far as well. I also like the fact that Burrito Esports, they have so much in the way of counterplay to this Drogos right now, especially just the... Firing line Khan man. could kind of walk to the back line and just bop them all around, but here comes a salvo from Random Noob. Takes down the turret nest already, throws at the fire spit. No real follow-up achieved just there, but it's just trying to clear some of those deployable nightmares away from Team Envy's push. And this is one of the things I think why Burrito does not like playing Cassie. They don't like playing passive with their de with their damage dealers, and Hakate really just has to stay back and stay safe. And that's not something that we traditionally see from him unless he's playing a sniper. And now Rubu in the back line wants to try to put some distraction, but Fuzzy up top, able to clean up his second kill on this exchange, and with just 27 seconds left, Fox, it's going to be a pretty tough stretch here for Envy. I don't see Envy really managing to make a push here unless they find something potentially big off a conversion, but no, that last couple of kills right there, this is now Burrito Esports, able to zone, able to defend, unless they make a misplay here and maybe allow Random Noob to fire spit salvo combo somebody, this should be a defense quite, quite handedly. There are some players nearby that will give this a contest for overtime, but again, Random Noob needs to find his way out into the open, and he's being denied all lines of sight, so the overtime will be put into effect. Mr. Hayes trying to get some healing done, but will they pull any triggers on ultimates? Again, you can see Random Noob was completely trapped up right above where Mr. Hayes is at the moment, so it's just it's been really, really adventurous, and really, I would say, a little ambitious that they were to get this push. Burrito Esports then holding strong. Their health pool's getting... Take down a little bit. Fuzzy Logic looks at the kill Later. versus Mr. Hayes. I mean, they get the trade right there, but oh, Mr. Hayes gets the kill, but still able to defend. Tied up one to one. Fuzzy Logic being in the back line, doing. How does Fuzzy get away with plays like this, Chip? This is he, wild. He just slipped on through, I think, is the big thing. You can see his frontliners are actually pushing right up the middle. He actually put himself through that waterfall from the middle part of point and just snuck right in. Nobody ever saw him. And that's the fact that, you know, that's what he was doing so well when he was playing. Buck yesterday, there were moments where you would see them jump in and not actually do anything besides just pull the attention for a slight moment. He's done that, but on the flip side, if you lose track of him, he will punish, and that 5-3-2 and two is showing exactly that. Let's talk about the 7-0-3, and three, though, from Akate four, right now. 63,000 damage. Two, Khan's in second one. here as well, Shift Burrito Esports there. They're rolling the damage charts, but it's not translating as much to objective control.
And that's really big, especially when you're going up against a Dinara and a Fernando with a Saris behind it. You need to find a way to get some of those, uh, one of those three away from uh, being so comfortable, I would say. And Fuzzy has the opportunity of doing that. As you see, Southhawk has to use rocket boots to get away from a lot of damage on point. Seismic Crash coming out. Doesn't really find anybody right there as well. Rubu looks at the fireball, which could have been the one to take him down, but can't pick him up. Here comes the overpower as well. Pulls in Leon. This is the ball that I was talking about, though. Tries to throw them off the map. Enlightenment, I think, gets the save. No, Sadak gets Rock Monkey in the end, but Rubu's already found two. Fernando looking for more. Sadak might be able to find Random Noob here. Needs the Dome Shield on the objective that they want to stay alive. Whoa. And that's beautiful. It'll just buy time on defense as Team Envy are looking to take this one through. But here comes a Dragon Punch. Easy kill coming through. And Burrito just haven't found a way back in. A really bold play there from Sadak. Trying to stay alive and delay when the rest of his team had been absolutely wiped. Well, Lioli's going to give it a go. But... Oh, did he not use the That's Commander's Scrap to get in? It couldn't look it's like it. It's Ground Inara. It's oh. the Cripple Field. That's the really big play right now, which they're able to do this time around. Na'Vi wasn't able to do this on Serpent Beach yesterday because they were running a Ruckus, not the Fernando. They needed that survivable Inara. But now there's this split pressure coming through from the front line and this very survivable, distracting Fernando. You can go for Utility Shift, and I'm loving it. Two minutes and seven seconds. And again, this top uh, high ground on the right-hand side for Envy is really the area that needs to be contested. Wow, Tolkien just barely surviving. Oh, did he just jabate in the fuzzy logic and Droxus? Almost. Doesn't have any real support with damage here at the moment. Now, finally, Random Noob rotating over to get some high ground pressure with uh, his frontliner. I do love the positioning there up on the high ground with Tolkien being able to spring up there with Summit 5 in their loadout. Really surprising a lot of players, I think. Is also able to apply that Cripple Field, which sets up Random Noob's Drogo so well. And here we go up to the high ground again. Actually just jumping straight on over, finds a really big Cripple there. Two easy kills, and that's just Team Envy cleaning up. And Pulioli is, uh, I think at this point, just looking for a trade, potentially not going to get it. He had no way of getting out of that situation, so I'm fine with him diving in, forcing Team Envy to deal with it, get the kill quickly. Otherwise, they would have lost to Leon. Not the case here, though. A minute and 15 seconds left, and the payload still rounding this last corner before it gets into its home stretch. Sadak there not being dismounted for a while is a bit of a problem. Is up into the air, goes Fuzzy Logic. Dragon Punch being channeled, though. Team Envy want to go through. Beautiful Restore Soul as well, and Random Noob can actually thread the needle all the way through. Finds Sadak. Rusty Logic is taken down as well as Pulioli. Akate finds one in trade, but again, it's an immortal coming out of Rubu right now. We're keeping everybody alive. Crimson, it's a Maldama. How long can they contest? Well, just about that long shift, and everybody falls down from Burrito. No way to contest. Team Envy push it up 3 to 1 already. As this Haven continues to get more and more online, as we start to see level 2 and level 3 of it, it's just going to be very difficult for Burrito to really execute this comp, I think. And yeah, that Leon nearly got back on, but. Sadak was able to punish, but look at the positioning. Rebu was able to sit back here for free. Who's going to punish him? You have an Inara and a Fernando, two of the most survivable front lines in the game. And uh, though the Khan and Barrett can bring some substantial damage to the charts, it's just not enough, I don't think, to deal with how much pressure Rubu's been able to put on. And it really doesn't matter how much damage you throw at the wall when that wall is the immovable object of an immortal shift. And that's critical at dismantling this overpower strategy right now. If Five, anybody wants to get... Well, if Brito want to get any traction out two, of this. I think they've got to go one. for environmental kills here rather than anything else because you're just not going to be able to dismantle somebody if that immortal is available. Yeah, but you can't count on that. You only have one character that can use that once every two and a half minutes. So. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, it was a fanatic strategy that paid off on Jack Balls, but so far Team Envy just seems to be playing a lot better Paladins through and through. So that goes down to the seismic crash. Goes Zig, Later. says Cassie, but Random Noob knows exactly where they are. They've already been scouted out fire spit through the wall. Huli Uli sent back towards base, not being knocked back right now because that CC immunity, but shift, it just doesn't matter. Actually, Rock Monkey, get out oh, of here! Can't manifest destiny, <laughs> still gets the kill, but I mean, that was close. That's just more insult to injury. I Envy is looking so solid today. No one is even close enough to touch. Big old Waters Field wow. shift. Wow. How do you get through that? You don't? Pretty much. You, you gotta <laughs> rely on CC immunity don't. and Khan's already dead. I'm just gonna say it. If Envy plays as cleanly as they had the last two games on Stonekeep, this is a 3 on this set's already over. Wow. Rito is just getting outdrafted so far in every single game. It's not just the draft that I'm seeing right here as well. It's also the execution. It's the utility pickups from Team Envy, which are allowing them to make these little min-max plays, going for stuff like the Treacherous Ground, going for the Summit Inara as well, just to maneuver around the map a little bit easily. It's masterful play from Team Envy, and 
Brito just don't seem to have a drafted response against it right now. No, they, they really don't. And I think it comes down to just the versatility that Brito has, or in this case, does has not really shown to have at least this tournament. On top of that, their map pool, they've played the least amount of maps out of every other team that's been here today. So I think that one dimensionality is really coming to hurt them here in the third place matchup. With that in mind, folks, it is currently three games through this best of five set. Two to one in favor of Team Envy. Des, do you think they can close it out in just four, or can Brito fight back? I think I have to agree with Shift there, where if they keep getting these drafts in the way that they've been getting them and playing at this caliber, then there's a potential for this to just be done in the next one. I mean, coming into that match, it looked like it was going to be a lot more closer the way that Burrito was playing. There were a lot of things they did properly, and then it just all fell apart. Like, it all crumbled when they weren't able to grab that first point. They had a lot of control, and then once they started falling back, it felt like they never were fully back in the fight. Whereas on the other side, you see things like Rock Monkey getting thrown off the edge of the map, dashing forward, and still going for the shot. You could see them laughing on the side of Envy after plays like that, because, again, that was just clean from them. And if they had kept that up in game number one, this might not be game number four yet. And the fight from Burrito it is much more difficult to maintain when you're constantly coming from behind there. Yep. And Random Noob had some great shots. He had first blood onto Puleule, and from there didn't seem to be letting up in any capacity, whether it's using the dragon punches to completely punish Sadak for his use of dome shield, or just straight up shooting long salvos, long dragon spit, all these Fire, everything that was coming from him just seemed to be very purposeful. Those fire spits, there was a point where Burrito were standing on the objective. They were standing on the control point or the capture point, And one fire spit hits four people. And then the next one hits three people. And then the next one hits two people. Like, they kept staying grouped up for it. That last one did get a double kill in that instance. So it was just, you're taking all of this damage, all spread out. You're essentially making his job <laughs> easier because he's just playing Drogos the way he always plays Drogos, and he is being able to confirm a lot of that damage. Even though he was 9-6, and six, he had such a big impact on pushing things forward and keeping things rolling. I think that also when you enjoy a champion to that degree and you're having fun playing him too, as clearly Random Noob was, <laughs> then it allows you to zone in even more to just the deadly nature that you've been yeah. bringing for your team. And as was also mentioned, just the utility on the side of Envy. And I think... Overall, from that draft where everything seemed very, very purposeful, whether it was selecting your point and then you have a NAR there and using things like Treacherous Ground that actually prevented someone from Burrito coming in to contest the capture at one point and then there in the end also locked down so it was you couldn't really pass the area you needed to to get where you needed to be. I'm trying to think. I mean, first off, I have no idea where Burrito want to go because that was going to be their map. I would maybe think Jaguar Falls for the next one. But again, you're looking at a place where picks are going to be very, very not helpful. The things that I'm thinking of that they are going to prioritize on this map, I think Envy can counter every step of the way. And Burrito picks Jaguar Falls. They were the loser of the last game, so it's in their hands once more. Some similarities to Bright Marsh, which we saw earlier. This is another one of those maps we've been seeing. The ones selected so far aren't really these niche picks. It's not the Ascension Peak and even things like Splitstone Quarry, Split Quarry, though more people have been to it, of course, because it's on the older side now. It's still something that certain teams excel on more than others. But Jaguar Falls, not as much in that boat. I mean, this one's a staple. It's been around for a long time. A lot of teams know it really well. But again, Burrito, the way they've been drafting for a lot of these maps, it feels like... In their mind, they're getting counter picks. And in technicality, they are getting counter picks. But then they aren't playing it at the level it needs to be in order to, to consistently be that counter, right? And that's something we saw like with Androxus last game. There were a lot of moments where Androxus looked great, and there were a lot of moments where Androxus just did not perform up to the standard. And that, I think, is going to be what's so far pulling Burrito down. You're going for things like Terminus. You're going for the Androxus. Envy is getting Drogos. They're getting Inara. They're getting all of these comfort picks that they are happy with. And it's partially the flexibility on Envy, but it's also just Burrito, I feel like, kind of locking themselves in a corner. There was a point in time, though, during this land that we saw Burrito owning on this map. True. And the way they were able to secure kills towards the actual capture to then push Hikate and Fuzzy Logic so forward that the enemy couldn't make any progress towards it was something that allowed them to snowball that into a win. But you got to get your picks online. You can't let Envy keep grabbing these things that are just so comfortable for them 
And with the Drogos not banned away, if you're not picking that up for yourself, and we really just haven't seen a lot of Drogos play from Burrito, then you can probably expect that to come out again for Envy. And my biggest issue when we did see that Drogos play from Burrito was that it felt like they chose the talents they needed kind of reverse. They go Fusilod for the first one, Combustible for the second one. I think this was in the set yesterday against Navi. Mm -hmm. And it was just one of those things that, well, Combustible would have actually been great on that first map, and so the Fusilod. And Fusilod was what you needed later when you were having to deal with a Makoa Shield. This time there's no Makoa Shield they have to deal with. They do take away the Fernando. But again, even when your Fernando, Fernando is good, it feels like you're locked into this because it's just like, man, Rubu plays out of his mind if you let him have this. But there's so many picks that act that way, right? True. That are still up. And I think Nando, out of all of them, is the one that you can justify picking up early that you on your team can also do well with. It's difficult when some of the other ones you don't want to take away just because you don't want the enemy team to have it. Honestly, Anara, Cassie. Anara is just always going to be staple. And I like Anara because it doesn't really show their hand. Tolki usually is the one on Anara, but it's one of those things that you have no idea where Rubu's going to go. I wouldn't be surprised if Envy go very similar to that Bright Marsh draft and look for a ruckus later on and do put that on a Rubu and have like that flexibility that they had earlier. You have open, uh, you have what, ruckus Drogos that you could go for, any support that you really want at that point because everyone's going to be self-sustaining. But do we maybe see Burrito pick up the ruckus at some point? Sadak's ruckus is pretty nasty. If they can get it first, then yes. But if they go about this the way... you don't want to prioritize way, it too much. Exactly. <laughs> like it's like you want to get it but you don't want to immediately say, hey, Envy, guess what we're going for? So you have to play this very carefully. Yeah, I'm sure they would love to pick that up. It, when we saw that, and G2 and Burrito were two of the first teams during this land to bring that pick out and really show that, hey, Ruckus can still be relevant, but because he's Ruckus, you're not going to pick him up first or second. And as you just mentioned, you don't want to let them know too much of your strategy. But because of that envy, it looked like they know this and they keep that in mind as well. So they want to take it away. I wouldn't be surprised if this is this is either going to be support plus ruckus or drogos plus ruckus in my mind. Like I don't see, I mean, that's obviously the only, I think, options they really have. They can maybe flex drogos out, but the way they're going about it is very, very similar to Bright Marsh. They have a lot of control. They have a lot of tankiness and not a lot on the side of Burrito. It's going to take it down. You grab Grover, he can heal through these walls. So unless you're going to go double blaster, I think Envy get pretty much everything they want. Is this our first Grover we're seeing of the land? I want to say no, but I honestly could not tell you off the top of We've my head. We've had a lot of matches. We're going to need shifts <laughs> notes. I, should, I need to yeah, go back through, oh, potential on the PPL day. There was. They blend together. But and for summer, this may be the first. Lan and Barrack are the last ones locked in here for Burrito. So keeping that Barrack Nando line. And this is what, I mean, that was a pretty obvious lock in. Drogos, the fact that he gets to go 10th in this entire draft is pretty crazy. But you knew it was going to happen. Envy are going to take him if he's up. And then Burrito, especially with the early lock in of the Bomb King, clearly don't want to go in that direction. If that Bomb King doesn't work, wonders this game. And Burrito really sealed their fate with that pick. That is where I, I think I'm falling on this one. And we've said that before. And sometimes it falls off a bit. Burrito has pay, pay, paid the price. And then in other times, popped off great king bombs and then that's yeah. what they need to push it through and this is do or die for burrito if they lose this game that's it but if they win it they can push it to a game number five a lot that can make a big difference again i'm putting more pressure i think than anything on the fuzzy logic to perform in this game this bomb king has to look better than any bomb king we have seen this tournament because you have given up ruckus drogos cassie and nara it is not going to work well Everything's been locked in. Game number four, NB one game away from securing their spot in the grand finals. I want to hear what the casters have to say about this draft. I think I would, I've got to agree with you there, Gabby and Gore. It's going to be big boom or big splat, and then game Grover shifts. Yep, absolutely. This is the first time we've seen Envy on Jaguar Falls, so this should be really interesting. I have to go back. Burrito actually picked that last match of Serpent Beach. Envy was flawless on Serpent Beach. It was just kind of a weird map choice for them. I, don't, I just wonder if they're doing their homework. Here we see as well the Grover efflorescence coming through. A lot of perennial in here as well as uh, looking at Verdant Expanse 3, but look at that damage reduction and gentle breeze. It's the gas pedal Grover that we're seeing coming Whoa. through again, but Akate finds that number. Yeah. That's a good first blood. Tolkien wants to chase down Sodhawk, but he's playing Ring Around the Rosy, and it'll just be the turret that falls here as Random Noob has got a nice angle here on Puli. Uli needs to find the last shot, though, but it's coming back at a very weird angle. Wow, nice. What a block, Whoa, what a block from Puli. 
That's just really good play right there from Burrito Esports. Pulele trying to answer back to Rubu and say, you know what, I can do the Nando thing too, Shift. Yeah. And Tolki takes a fireball there. Wall does come on through, trying to make their way to the objective as Burrito Esports do have 66%. Need some healing to come through. Fuzzy Logic right now might be looking for a flank shift, and this is the turning point for me. If Burrito can execute with their Bomb King, then it'll be a completely different game. It's really good patience as well, knowing that eventually Envy's going to have to dive to point, so it'll just be Fuzzy moving around the left side and getting in the back line for free. But can he get there? Random Noob is threading a lot of long range shots. Shots taken down Akate. It was 84% for Burrito, but everything's turning up red so far for Envy. Oh, big kill there from Pololi. Mr. Hayes will answer back, but that's taking down Rock Monkey, one of the big powerhouse damage picks. Oh my goodness, Crimson stays alive. If Fire Spit comes up here and hits the Maldamba, it could be huge, but it misses. Follow up is good from the Masterful Reset. Sadak almost stays alive, gets taken out by Tolki, and now it's 99%. Akate will touch it. Lightfoot comes through. Oh my god, it gets the kill onto Tolki. Yeah, oh. Can random noob answer back as well? No, Dragon Munch is ready, but it just doesn't matter. That's a triple kill for Akate. Oh my goodness, Shift, we're doing it again. It's Leon on Jaguar Falls for Burrito. Oh my goodness, Akate finding two kills with that enlightenment, finding himself a triple. Absolutely huge plays from the veteran DPS player. It's exactly what Burrito needed. It's Akate just going, all right, we're going to get the Burrito backpack up and rolling. Throw back to uh, what we saw on Jaguar Falls during the PWC of this year shift. And right now, Pulioli is just trying to create spaces. Oh, so, good wall. For Nano, but, oh, you like that, that impasse shift. That was so beautiful that it just shut down the offense. Nothing you can do about that. That's just sheer great plays coming out of great frontline players. Two minutes on the payload push, but it is Burrito getting pushed back towards that central capture point once again. Rock Monkey punishing Hikate after he got hit by a nice combustible once again from Random Noob. Notably as well, Shift, just noticing the size of the water's field coming through again. It looks like Envy are running back as Random Noob does pick up a double kill. They're running back the treacherous ground in Nara. That seems to be so effective against this bowling ball style barrack that we keep on seeing. Very much so, and to be completely candid, when you're running double frontline, you can afford to go into treacherous ground more often than just running Mother's Grace over and over and over again. So this is actually really good. Again, diverse play coming out of Team Envy. Their versatility, I think, has really impressed me the most, especially in the last couple of days, and that's going to be one of the reasons why they can get through this matchup if they somehow find some more success. On the other side of things, Burrito Sports not able to get through Team Envy's defense, not able to get out of their spawn right now. Mid-round buys have come through for Burrito, so they're sitting on level two offensive items shift, but that's not enough to make the difference in this level of play, it seems. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty stock, and everyone's used to playing up against it. Random Noob looking for some kind of a trigger on the Dragon Punch. Won't be able to find it, so he'll take some very stark high ground, but he gets punished immediately by Hikate. Really good discipline from him to find the Dragon. I'm really not sure what that Dragon Punch is looking to achieve there as well, and it has just opened up the opportunity for Burrito to start gaining some payload push here. Maybe if they can find Tolki. Hikate goes around the outside, finds a nice presence. Can they chip down Tolki? Actually, a snap to Mr. Have does remove the healing, so that finds Tolki as well. Unfortunately, no Enlightenment Charge refund there, Shift. It's fine, though. I mean, it keeps you alive. It would have been nice if your team could have let you get that last shot, but regardless, you have all five players at the exact right moment to get this payload a little bit further, to at least give it a go for a 2-0. If he falls there, I think it just, just completely stalls out. We see a stalemate, and this ends 1-1, but now Burrito giving themselves a chance to find two straight points. 15 seconds left, and Big Fire Spits coming through, trying to deal a lot of damage to Burrito Esports offense right now. Good wall from Tolki, stalls things out as well. Sadak unable to find much poke around the outside as up into the air goes Random Noob and a good Waters field out as well. That's a lot of cripple potential coming out. Random Noob finds a Cathay already and I don't know, Burrito, they're just losing members at this point. They're going to save their ultimates in the tank and they're just going to back away shift. Yeah, not just back away, but also die while backing away. Just really good chase from Envy again, just getting a little bit more credits online, punishing and making sure that everyone knows. Well, well, you can't just go ahead and do this for free, Burrito. We're still, even though we lost the first point, playing out of our minds, especially Random Noob. I mean, it, I, I think back to Vegas where I remember, I think it was someone from G2 who kept posting, it's like, okay, here's the strategy against Envy. Don't let Random Noob get Drogos. That's just what you do. You just don't let him get Drogos. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, he's so masterful, as we see that in the loadout, on all of these Blasted Champions. But Drogos' damage potential is one of the most superior in game right now. Actually being kept up with by Akate right now, but Random New will be looking for these big AoE opportunities again. A lot of displacement coming through onto Sadak and then forcing people to retreat. And then you've got this big grouping on Maldama's Gord around a corner. It's kind of the perfect situation for you to be able to throw out a fire spit shift. Have we seen a whirlwind come out of Mr. Hayes yet? Has he even had to use it? I don't think he's had to use it at all. And he's still even with the Meldamba and healing, that's absolutely incredible. That's just the power of efflorescence in these small circumstances, these small areas, and fire spit potential does come on through, hits Crimson, that's the one that you want to keep on harassing right now because it reduces the amount of gourds you can throw onto the objective. That's where the point, obviously, is being contested, and it's actually now favoring Envy, as you can see Tolki just standing on point as the Inara is 
That's what typically happens against an R. King Bomb being channeled up. Can they get the Immortal out in time? Well, just barely. The Hex of Fire coming out trying to counter, and it's not going to be enough. Mr. Hayes gets taken down. Oh, Rubu does end up dumping down damage into Fuzzy Logic here. Akate finds random noob TV as well, and Rubu is trying to retreat. And they will get out. Scott Free right now, Team MB. Able to save at least a couple of members there as the respawns do start to come through. Burrito Esports use all their ultimates right now, Shift, on this retake. And there is Dragon Punch available, so look for that to be the one that capitalizes on Enemy confusion to find a way back in. Oh, Rock Monkey finding a snipe in the back. I'm, look where he's at. He's so far behind. And Inara is actually pushing forward towards Jack Falls themselves to try to get some peel to get Rock out of the way. And even the Dragon Punch is being used. That was a lot used. They're just trying to save Rock Monkey at this point. And with him likely falling here in a hot second, that's likely going to turn into Burrito's point as Akate continues to punish these kills. Rumpy Bomb goes out. That'll zone out the objective. Akate goes into Enlightenment, finds damage on Mr. Hayes. Grover one shot away from death. Rubu does move on in, trying to contest momentarily, but it's a ruckus against the world shift. And even with the support coming down from the air from Random Noob TV, there's not much you can do. Mr. Hayes doesn't have Whirlwind, might find the Axe though, Hagate survives on 100 health, and even if they go down here, the damage has been done, Burrito Esports get their second capture in a row. And that just came down to the, if you go back and you want to learn about why Burrito was able to win that point, when they hit that King Bomb into the Hex of Fire, it split Envy in two. It was going to be a Nara on the side of Burrito's map, as well as Rock Monkey. Everybody else was trying to fade away towards back their own side, and it was just Burrito staggering them out and making sure they were able to come back and capitalize on these really missed positions. It resulted in a full point point, essentially, just off of one fight. And even Rock Monkey finding a, a solo kill as Cassie in the backline wasn't enough to turn the tide here, uh, Shift. It really just comes down to the fact that Burrito, when they're on that objective, when they got the barrack established, they're very hard to displace because Grumpy Bomb buys so much space for them. And already, Scout has been activated. Team Envy are trying to find out where this offense is coming from, but Burrito Esports, they're not over committing right now. No, they're not. Dragon Punch will be right back up, looking to keep this in a staggered fashion. Rock will roll right on through as it was Sad Hack getting all five Dragon Fingers to the face, and that'll be enough to keep Envy in this defense very easily and Ribu uh, giving himself a little bit of a taunt up front too why not speaking of taunts I want to see something so incredible right now chef I've got a skin pitch which I'm going to throw to you okay chef Drogo's knuckle sandwich I love you just remember that but <laughs> there's a button coming here folks we're going to cut it off right there <laughs> maybe that won't be left in the cutting room floor but as we go through one minute and five seconds left on this payload push Burrito Esports almost full ultimate charge across the board, only missing out on King Bomb, and that's one more sticky away from detonation here. Team Envy do have something to respond for it. They might be able to find Sadak with a fire spit, but no. Random move forced backwards here. Might have the opportunity to land one more rocket, but Sadak is trying desperately to get away from danger. He's not going to be able to. Mr. Hayes picking up the snipe. He looked really good on Grover just the other day when they picked him up earlier against the Kinesa, making it work here as well, not only because of the healing numbers, but also the damage department. We're Whirlwind coming out just to make sure the out of position Delki can stay alive as he was able to capitalize on Fuzzy Logic. Not the end of the world. You don't want to see it happen, but not the end of the world. And again, that's just because they couldn't see where Burrito were. They didn't know if they were suddenly waiting just around the corner. The respawns were actually coming back through at that point, but Team Envy without scout vision, they don't know this, and they've got to be very careful here. Sadako taking a lot of poke, but if Random Noob goes down, this could be huge. Here comes King Bomb Shift. Oh, and it's around the flank, but it gets sniffed out by Rubu and Rock, and they take him down so quickly, and all of the hopes that were potentially another second straight point, or their first straight second point, it's not going to come on this push, as it will go 2-2. Really good focus from Envy to make sure they lock into where Fuzzy was coming from. Excellent defense there. And now there's three ultimates apiece per team with the look of things. But this is one of the turnaround moments on defense where Rock Monkey on Cassie is just able to find a couple of critical kills here. Take out uh, Pulioli, take out Fuzzy Logic as well, diving in very aggressively there. But they know that the momentum swing is in favor of Envy. And that's what Envy have been able to do on these defenses. And Shift, I've got a question for you. Are Burrito holding back too much on this push? I don't think they're holding back too much. It's just th in, there was one moment in there where Sadhok got poked away from a combustible and Fuzzy was just about to come through secret to get some backline pressure. If that combustible doesn't hit, if Sadhok doesn't have to use his rocket boots to go away, they're able to help support that push. It's just these little moments of cause and effect that are starting to kind of stagger out this push from Burrito. It's not that they're not playing poorly. It's just the fact that Random and Rock have been doing such a good job of making sure the frontliners don't get 
get any freedom. And Capital R Monkey right now is sitting on 12 kills so far, Shift, in this game. And you can see that Akate is trying to hold off this peripheral side, looking for Random New. This could be huge. And Lightman does actually get activated. There Ooh, goes on the Rock Monkey, but Sadak has already taken out Random New TV. Akate gets, does get taken down. Big Flank coming through as Pulligal is getting pinted by this Ruckus in the back line right now. Immortal will save their life momentarily. Will there be the opportunity for Team Envy to re engage? They need to be careful because look how spread apart Envy was for a second there. They had so many vulnerable areas, but Burrito able to play very calm, very collected, keep themselves on the point. Now Fuzzy looking for some backline poke, and he's got Fernando with him, and Random Noob's going to go down. That's the big pick right there. Even if Fuzzy Logic gets traded at that point shift, I think it's looking like it could already be Grover time. And here we go. It is 90% for Burrito Esports. Dread Serpent at the ready. In comes the Hexafire activated on the CC immune Rubu, but that Hexafire is not going to find anybody. Beautiful disengage from Burrito Esports. It's still spent a Dread Serpent, though. They wanted to find it before he could pull the trigger. Now Random Noob coming back with a lot of damage, but ooh, the Cauterize is just too good. Mr. Hayes not able to heal himself through even with the Whirlwind. Missed fi Fire Spit as well. Fuzzy Logic does take a couple of seconds longer to go down. Burrito Esports at 96% here. Team Envy, they're rising over to 57. They don't have the Immortal though for Burrito right now, and Dragon Punch and Scout are ready, so Team Envy should be able to hold on to this one, especially with a couple of just easy picks oh, right now for Random man. Noob TV. There was no Grover here. That was Burrito's time to shine and now it's just turning into the random noob show as he's able to clean up a handful. Fuzzy will give it one, but oh, there's the dance. Go get it, Mr. Hayes. Hey. There we go, folks. The 99% will take over. That's Team Envy taking their first neutral objective capture of this game, which is pretty remarkable as the longer that this game grows, the the worst this Grover healing gets comparatively yes. as Cauterize gets online. Absolutely so, but again, Mr. Hayes has been really good at positioning and knowing when to use that Blossom to get his full value heal. He's still staying neck and neck with Maldamba. But again, a very awkward push on the right-hand side. Random Noob wasn't there to help support that. You see that Salvo damage coming out late, and again, cause and effect. If that Salvo hits before that push happens, it starts to look a lot better. Enlightenment coming out right into the face of Tolki, who triggers a very awkward seismic crash. But still, Rock Monkey has the ability to possibly clean up, but Akate, not on his watch today. Absolutely not. And this is what it really comes down to for me, Ship. This is the, the win condition for Burrito Esports right now. It's not just Fuzzy Logic perform on Bomb King. It's can Hagate play above and beyond? Because in order to defeat Team Envy, and from what they've shown in the last two games, I think that's necessary at this point. You've got to go on above and beyond expectations. Absolutely. There's no margin for error, especially with how well Team Envy is playing today. Uh, they're just not going to give you any ground. And that's going to be key, especially when you're looking at your next opponent, which is Na'Vi, who's very good at punishing. But we're counting our chickens a little bit before they hatch, as we still have a push to consider for Team Envy. A lot of low health pulls, though. Burrito's setting up a very nice and collected defense. Oh, and look at this as well. Mr. Hayes tries to dive to safety. If we can get a couple of big sticky bombs around, it could be good here. But the heals are coming out from Grover. Whirlwind already charged back up again. And out it comes, Shifters. This looks like an engagement opportunity from the side of Team Envy. Fuzzy Logic does go down to Rubu. Quickly answer back with a kill from Puli Uli here. So it's an even trade so far. But if Rock Monkey can find, doesn't even need to. Random Noob takes out Akate. This is big. Oh, and snipes the Crimson long range. Random Noob's gonna get two here. It's Rock Monkey able to come back and help out. A really good engagement. The Whirlwind starts it off just saying, all right, we've got the healing. Let's get full, let's get forward. They're able to do it. And even that trade, Rubu for Fuzzy, if you're Envy, you take that every day of the week. 10% left to go on this push now. Shift 35 seconds left on defense. Random Noob activates Dragon Punch. There is no Immortal to come through. It's gonna look for Pulioli here. Dome Shield by some time. The Rock Monkey looking for a backline. And Hikate right now as Dragon Punch has been channeled. Crimson one shot away from death. Does manage to get back to base, but will it be enough? Out comes Enlightenment from Hikate, but there is nobody left to defend. And Team Envy clean up their third straight game in a row on Jaguar Falls. Team Envy, they're looking absolutely in control. The drafting is good. The gameplay is good. The execution the is execution flawless. The execution has been, well, not flawless. There have been some hiccups, but on that they last push, themselves okay. up. That I think that, you know, them on Stone Keep, I think, you know, they're smart enough. Meta has got such a good eye for the game. You know, I think he starts to say, hey, don't worry about it. We didn't really, you know, there's small things. There's little things that we missed out on that really could have made this a 3-0. Burrito, on the other hand, my goodness, what a run they put together. Just didn't have enough in the tank to finish it out. Right there, and it was close as we get towards the end, folks, but... Beautiful play all around coming through. This does leave me a little bit excited as to the next set coming up as Team Envy will be advancing through to the Grand Finals. They're warmed up and that's been the success story for Team Envy so far. Absolutely, and I think at the end of the day, it's gonna come down to not only how well are you playing, but there's a lot of mind games going into these drafts lately and Na'Vi so far has shown that they've been able to handle those. 
But Envy on their own end, they're looking really good today. I'm excited to see what they bring against Na'Vi later. The one thing that we haven't seen from Team Envy so far, though, Shift, is the solo frontline. And for you, you didn't have the chance to put out a quick Twitter video, but you mentioned a lot about that yep. so far and what Na'Vi really do to incorporate that into their drafts. The fact that they're able to utilize a single frontline 3 DPS with a Genos, which Envy's really not able to do, it makes things very interesting. Envy's going to have to bring something to the table if they want to continue on and find a way to not only win one, but two best of sevens, Vox. Well, that'll do it from I Hold Shift and myself, Vox, for this set to close out the rest of the lower bracket. Desk, why don't you t uh, wrap it all up for us to close things out? And with that, Burrito gets bumped, and the grand finals become EU versus NA. Once again, Navi versus Envy. We can't say enough. Envy were on fire during those games from draft to finish. And it's just one of those things. They got a lot of picks they really wanted. There was a lot that went right for them. I will say Hikate is a damn good player. Oh, there yeah. were so many things he did that was just phenomenal in that last game. But again, when you are doing moments of greatness across one, two, three members on your team, you have to have those all the time or else just the consistency of the other team is going to be what beats you out. I loved watching that set. I love both those teams. They're great players across the board. And there were times in that last game that, I thought, oh, is Burrito going to push this to game <laughs> five? Particularly, there's a moment when Hecate spent enough time going and taking care of Rock Monkey, who was at about 30% HP for a while, just landed three shots on him, rotated back towards the point, cleared it away, and that's what allowed them to get that objective in that time. But and Envy overall, man. It was just, again, consistency. It's one of those things that, you know, even when, I want to say at the very beginning, there wasn't as much from this Drogos. There were still a lot of really solid shots, a lot of stuff that comes down from the fact that, hey, guess what? I've been playing a couple games in a row now. I'm going to be completely comfortable with what I have going on for him. And again, while Burrito, it's one of those things. You have Burrito, who is a phenomenal team, and Envy, who's a phenomenal team, both who are known for, at this point, making runs through the bottom bracket. But Envy... One of the things I think that, that gave them, and I guess to the same extent Burrito, a, a run through this that gave them, or a run through the tournament that was better, is that they never really had an easy match. There was never one where you're like, man, well, they got this one in the bag. It was always up against a PPL team or up against a team that everyone knew was going to be tough. And the same thing happened for Burrito, and it was the same thing here. There was no real clear winner coming into the day. And with Envy, it always just felt like they got what they wanted. Drogo's 10th pick, mind you, and still random noob, proving why people talk about him on that pick all the time. Rock Monkey, a crossbow in his hand, was getting some long, long shots here in places that completely cut off the bloodline of Burrito from their base off to the point. I'm excited because they were not only phenomenal in their drafting, but again, phenomenal in their play. Envy played brilliantly those last three games. The last one, I want to say, was a little bit closer to what we saw on Stone Keep, but this time they didn't end up letting anything slip through their hands. They had a good iron grip, and I feel like that's the best feeling to have if you are heading into the finals. They've been playing great. They've had a tough run through this bracket and all the way jumping from the lower portion up into the grand finals, facing off against Na'Vi. And Na'Vi and Team Envy both faced off earlier on within the bracket. That's the whole reason that Envy got bumped down to the lower portion. So it's going to be a rematch for them. And as a reminder, this is double elimination. So with this best of seven, if Na'Vi wins, then they win the whole thing. But if Envy wins this best of seven, they have to push to another best of seven to win that one for a total victory. You, again, have a maximum amount of games. Now, I guess at 14, that you could end up going through for either of these. Obviously, Na'Vi would love to be able to say, hey, four and done, but it's not always that clean. Not at all. Envy has a lot to celebrate after that victory, though. A tough opponent that they just faced off against before their next tough opponent. So let's go ahead and find out how they're feeling. All right, we've got Envy with us after the win. Random Noob, as well as Mr. Justin Meta Pusher Wilkes. Random, i got to start with you. Back in Vegas, people were saying, just take Drogos away from Random Noob and we'll be okay. But were you just like a kid in a candy shop those games with the, the Drogos pick? Yeah, I was just like, well, we saw yesterday against Navi when Burrito played him. They weren't really prioritizing it. So I was just like, you know what? We'll just pick it whenever we want. We actually had to make him pick it, dude. <laughs> he just wants to play Pip. Yeah, I wanted to play I'm Pip. Like, it's like his oh. last pick, man. Drogos is still up. Let's take it. Yeah, that was the Pip pick in the first game. I wanted it. <laughs> I love Pip. So speaking of Pip, you played that in the first game as well, and it narrowly went to the side of Burrito after what seemed like maybe a couple of slip-ups from Team Envy. What's the thought process behind you guys in recovering from a move like that and just resettling yourselves onto success moving forward? I think it was mostly 
um, not really the pip, it was the supporting things that around the people that we were chickening. The fury was just so hard to handle. You know, even if you get a chicken, you get a big cherish heal. The HP buff is in there, but the 500 shield is still huge. I mean, you're giving the chicken a second life. So that's what we adjusted to in the rest of the set, and it worked out pretty well. Speaking of adjustments, you guys are obviously going up against Navi next. They took you guys down in two last time, most notably from specifically banning out front lines and kind of forcing you guys to play either not a priority second front line or even possibly switching to a single front line. Have you guys taken the time to adjust and possibly find some way to counteract that early front line ban from Navi? Yeah, Navi, they do really well at adapting their draft based on what team they're playing against, and that was a very big learning experience I, I took from Phoenix after they beat us. So, I mean, we're going to do the same to them back and have the best team win, how I see it. So, again, moving forwards to face up against Navi, we've got a potential best of seven bracket reset coming up next. And you guys, since the Vegas land, Team Envy has been known for the longer they keep on playing, the better they get. But do you feel like that's going to be an advantage to you if you manage to reset the bracket, or do you think that fatigue will start to come into play? I don't think there's really any fatigue issues. These guys play the game all day. I mean, we've made really long run through the loser bracket before. Uh, you know, 14 games, 20, whatever, we got it. Well, a possible of 19 in a row for you, but with that first best of five going out and just four, maybe just 18 if 18, you take it all nice. the distance, folks. Thanks once again so much, and best of luck in your upcoming set in the grand finals. Thank, Thank you. you.